Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ottawa Glendorf High School, where tonight the homestanding Titans welcome in the Elida Bulldogs. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside John Zerby and our entire WOSN crew. And, John, the Bulldogs come in undefeated, looking to continue the streak, playing against a Titan team, going the other direction, but wanting to get a big win. Yeah, and I think it's exciting for Elida to be in this position, but they have this opportunity now to, to play a very good Ottawa Glendorf team that Right now they're winless, but that's not a typical Ken Schreiner team. So it's going to be interesting to see how those two matchups, 0-2 versus 2-0, come out tonight. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the keys for the game. First, we'll go with the visitors from Elida High School. Elida's keys tonight, I think, offensively, they have to be balanced. I think the biggest thing for them is making sure that they put the ball in the hands of Larkin Henderson and running the ball, and not only running the ball, but throwing the ball as well. Uh, it, whenever you get one-sided offensively, it can kind of go downhill. So being balanced on offense. Playing great defense. It sounds cliche, Danny, but really, Elida has one of the best defenses in the league right now, and their defense has held uh, teams to, to zero points in the first game and then 17 points in their second game. So, playing great defense. And then the last thing I think you can't underestimate Ottawa Glendorf. I mean, this team has been a powerful uh, force in the WBL for a lot of years. And, uh, you know, as you're Elida, you might be looking at the record. As a coach, you're saying you can't look at the record. You have to see what they've done over the long term. Ken Schreiner's team will be ready to play tonight. Speaking of Ottawa Glendorf, let's take a look at their keys. You know they want to spoil the season tonight. Absolutely. They've lost over 20 seniors last year, so they have to grow up quick. And they're going to improve. As the season goes on, they're going to get better and better and better. So the young guys are going to have to grow up. they, they got to win the line of scrimmage. I think in a game like this, when you're looking at weapons on the outside, what's going to happen on the interior is going to be the most important. So they got to win the line of scrimmage. And what they've uh, struggled with mostly, Danny, is scoring. They, they, they got shut out the first game, and I think they scored second in their second or seven in their second game. So they got to score points tonight. It sounds kind of easy, sure. but uh, you got to score points. That's offensively or defensively, maybe a pick six or a fumble recovery or something like that, put themselves on the scoreboard. It's Ottawa Glandorf, it's Elida, right here on WOSN. We're back here at Ottawa Glandorf High School, Danny Holbrook, John Zerby. Ottawa Glandorf, Elida, WBL matchup, and uh, John, it looks like a beautiful night for football. Couldn't have got better weather. Uh, this weather's perfect, and the turf is perfect. I was oh. able to walk on it before the game. And Maumee Bay Surf Company put it in, and they told me when they when they put it in at Spencerville, the first couple weeks is like the sweet time. It's the yeah. sweet time <laughs> at OG because it is, it is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, uh, Elida's going to kick off, and uh, got two back deep for Ottawa Glendorf right now. So we're just about getting week three in the Ohio High School football underway. No better time of the year for football junkies like myself. Ottawa Glendorf is going to field the ball at about the five-yard line they'll bring it out bring it up the middle they got a block and they'll be taken down Parker Krim takes him down at the 30-yard line John I don't know if you know much about Parker Krim 6'2 215 pound freshman I nicknamed him the Krim Reaper he's something else well these two defensive ends that Elida has Torrey Thomas and Krim I'll tell you uh, and he's only a freshman by the yes, way I know. And, uh, <laughs> it's scary because uh, you know I've watched uh, several of Elida's games this year and up front, they are dominating. So it's going to be interesting to see how this Ottawa Glandorf offensive line handle these two. So they'll come out into the offensive set. And they are led by quarterback Landon Mormon, the six foot, 185 pound senior. Was 20 or 12 of 26 last week for a touchdown. He's in the gun. Hands the ball off, off to the right side. He'll be taken down by a host of Elida Bulldogs. Looks like about a gain of two yards. Now they got to establish the run tonight, John. Can't be one dimensional. No, Ottawa's going to have to keep Elida on their toes. And, you know, we're talking about those two impressive defensive ends from Elida. But another name to, to talk about is Kevin Aguirre. He's at nose tackle. Danny, he's 310 pounds. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a big stopping and, and point. He's, and he's built. You can see him out there the way Absolutely. he looks. So they're going to have to move those guys up front to get any uh, push tonight. So Mormon's in the gun. He's got two to his left. He's got one to his right. He's got a single setback. He awaits the snap. Gets a good clean snap. He runs into the running back. He's looking for help. He's going to be taken down. There's Big Parker Krim, the Krim Reaper. Wow. Look, <laughs> I've seen a lot of kids. He's impressive as a freshman. Well, what's nice is that there was it's, it wasn't a busted play, but there looks like there was some confusion. And I love his pursuit. You can see him there. He's got his feet under him. He's squared. Whew, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I asked uh, their head coach two weeks ago when I had him at Spencerville, and I said, Coach, what, tell me about Parker Krim. He got the biggest smile on his face, and he goes, four years. I yeah, four, four years. years. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Coach Harmon will sleep well for the next oh, four years. Oh, Coach Harmon's really excited. He's done a great job with this crew. So we are 
Let's see, third and 13 from the 27 yard line. They're in the gun, Mormon takes the snap. He rolls to his right, looks to get out on the boundary, throws the ball down, it's picked off, picked off at the 45, takes it up to the 40, taken down, and a big interception, the first turnover of the game, and John, that's one thing OG cannot allow to happen. No, absolutely not. Tyler Carter did a great job from Elida of dropping in his zone. And one of the things that you see early is that they were in bad field position. They had third, three, third and 13. Elida went from a 4-3 front to a 3-3 nickel package and was able to drop an extra defender. And that extra defender was sitting in the right spot. And nice pick. And boy, that's a big momentum shift early in the game. Great instant replay there. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your in doors out. Structure is our instant replay sponsor. So here come the Bulldogs, 2-0, 1-0 in the WBL. Offensively averaging 38 points a game, defensively giving up seven. They are led by Larkin Henderson, the three-year starter. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll up for a gain of about five or six yards. He continues to churn those yards. And John, two weeks ago, I had a chance to talk to Larkin. He's a confident kid, and he's a heck of an athlete. Uh, Larkin Henderson's been playing forever. I feel like he's been the quarterback <laughs> for seven years. Uh, but the offense revolves around him. And one of the things I like about what he Elida does is in so many spread offenses, they're so focused on throwing the ball. Elida really does, they, they, they make a conscious effort to run the football, and not only with their running back, Brady Kirk, but with Larkin Henderson as well. That's why they make it so tough to defend. Sure. Henderson's in the gun. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball to Brady Kirk up the right side. He's going to got one tackle. Ew, he's upended. Big time hit. I'm sorry, that was David Etzcorn, my mistake. David Etzcorn, another weapon they have. They've just got him everywhere, John. They really do, and David Etzcorn's kind of coming into his own. I, I remember in that Spencerville game a few weeks ago, he played a great game defensively. It looks like they want to get him more involved on the offense. It's, what's, it's just another weapon for him. Elida's really setting the tone up front, which is why you see so much movement going on. So here comes Henderson. He's got two to his left. He's got a single setback, one on the right. He looks over at Coach for a call, changing up a little bit, depending on what the defense gives you. Henderson hands the ball up the middle. And going to get a gain of about a yard. And the nice thing I think here is that you're in four down territory. Now, I know Elida has a nice uh, kicker They say yes, well. absolutely. That's yep. a great point, John. But uh, I, I think you can be a little bit uh, you can be a little bit more bold down here. Uh, they have not thrown a pass yet, and so a screen here would look good. I know it's a short field, but, but uh, they're establishing that run game, and, and you can be a little bit more aggressive at this point. John, do you, do you change your game plan a little bit depending on turf or grass? And I know you get a little more speed, don't get me wrong, but is it, is it a big change, is it a subtle change? I, I don't think so. I, I think that the biggest thing would be just rain. If it's rainy on a grass field, you're changing your game plan. If it's rainy on a turf field, you're not. Here comes Edscorn on the right side. He goes to about the 15-yard line. That's going to bring up a third down, and that'll be the first uh, third down of the night. Well, and they're, they're really trying to establish this right side uh, offensively uh, of the field. You can see these linemen blocking downfield, which I love to see. But uh, they ran that play just two plays ago to David Edscorn, and they're really getting chunks of yards here, third and short. And we haven't seen Brady Kirk yet, and Brady's averaging 98 yards a game. He's averaging 115 all-purpose yards a game, so he's another weapon. We haven't seen him yet. And that's so frustrating <laughs> for the defense because all they practiced was Kirk this week, that's you know. Right. So they're wondering where in the heck is he at. So third and one, and the fumble, is, uh, the snap fumbled. And it uh, looks like uh, OG may have recovered it. They're saying they did. Yes, they did. Ottawa Glendorf, so back-to-back -back turnovers by the, each team. Well, and that that is a, something there that I think is Ottawa needs to happen. It, for them, they're, they're young on offense. They're young on defense. They're going to need uh, turnovers to, uh, and, and not only need to get turnovers, but uh, to favor and turnovers to, to keep this game close. So here come the Titans with their second possession. Last year, the Titans, John, went 11 and 4, 7 and 2 in the WBL, Division 5 state semifinalists. So a great year for them. Uh, look, every year's great over here at OG. They just churn out athletes and great teams. So 0 and 2 doesn't set well with the home. No, teams. Coach Schreiner, he, he's to me, you know, in the coaching circles, he's like, you know, up there with the best. Oh, I mean, absolutely. He's, he's incredible, and he'll have these guys rolling here soon. There's the ball to the right side. It looks like they're going to get about a gain of uh, maybe three or four yards. That's Cy Rump, the running back, six foot, 175 pounds senior. You know, I talked a little bit in pregame about Elida uh, not underestimating OG, which I, I don't think they are. But I think this game, the margin of error is going to be very small. So I think you know, for Elida to get down that close and to commit a turnover, 
it could come back later to, to really haunt them. But I know it's early. I mean, we're only seven minutes into the uh, first quarter here. But, uh, but this is just the kind of thing that, you know, as you're a, a team like Elida, who's, who's a veteran team, you gotta, you got to be able to, to score when you have those opportunities. So here's Mormon in the gun. He's got Rump to his right. He's got one to the right, two to the left, three to the left, excuse me. He gets the snap. Hands the ball off from him. He's going to go right side. Big taken down by that big defensive line for Elida. You know, we talked to Coach Kyle Harmon a couple weeks ago, and he said last year they were 4-2, and, two and they, they lost their quarterback, and they had some struggles. And I asked him, I said, what, what got the kids fired up? And he said, they just got hungry yeah. over the winter. He said they worked really hard. And, and you can see it, John. They're, they're, they're very, yeah. very confident right now in what they're doing. Well, I, I put a lot of that on Coach Harmon because I think he is a motivator. Oh, I've yeah. seen him in action. I know what he does. And he puts everything into coaching. And these kids follow his lead. I mean, if the coach is not uh, leading the way, uh, then, then the team is not going to follow. And these guys are hungry. You can see it. They're, they're strong. They're big. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're fast. aggressive. They're yes, real fast. Yes. Third and six. Mormon's in the gun. He's got two to the right. The fakes the throw. Gets it out. It's dropped. And that's going to be another fourth down. So big time aggressive play by number six, Amari uh, Wash, the freshman, I might say. <laughs> Coach Harmon is sleeping well. <laughs> I mean, he's just, he just smiling down there, walking yeah. the sidelines. Like, I got, I got freshmen. I, I got, got four friends. years. <laughs> I got a three-year starter at quarterback. Life is good right Life now. Life is really good. <laughs> right. So fourth and six from the 18, it'll bring out the punting game for the Titans. Well, and this will be key here too. Uh, special teams, you know, Ottawa Glandorf in these type of games, especially when you're young, you're, t you're, you're prone to make special teams mistakes. So just getting off a good punt and good field position for OG is going to be a big deal. Say they are backed up, so it looks like maybe one of the Bulldogs jumped on the right side. We'll see. That's going to make it fourth and one. I, I, now, look, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not that much of a gambler to say we're going to go for it from the 23-yard uh, <laughs> yard line. But uh. well, it looks like they must have changed their mind. Oh, they must have changed their mind. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they, maybe there's some movement on yeah. the uh, Otto Glandorf okay. side. And, and so that's a no-brainer now to punt oh, it. Absolutely. But, but even those situations, I mean, penalties when you're backed up like this can hurt. Every, every yard is crucial at this point. Sure. So Ottawa Glendorf on punt formation, 6.13 to go. There's the snap. It's good. Nope, kind of bobbled a little bit. Gets it up. It's going to fall real short, and it's going to take a <laughs> Elida bounce right into the hands of number two, and that's Seth Sharp. So that's where they'll take over. I'll tell you, Seth Sharp did a fantastic job. You say, well, all he did was catch the ball. Well, <laughs> I mean, he's at the, uh, what, the 35-yard yeah, line or 30-yard line. I mean, what a great job of getting in all that mix and calling a fair catch. And Well, you saw the tra trajectory of the ball. It was yeah. you know, up, over, up, over, up, over. Yeah, and those And those kind of punts, they if they're not caught, they can hit the ground and hit a lineman in the back or, you know, the back of the leg. I've seen that happen a million times. So he did a great job of going up there and fair catching. Look at big number 55 out there, Torrey Thomas leading that offensive line. What a luxury to have a couple years starter out there. I'd keep Torrey Thomas on the field all yeah, night absolutely. if I was Coach Harmon. So here comes Walsh around the right side. It's taken down about the 25-yard line. So there's that freshman again, Amari Walsh, the 5'9", 155-pound wide receiver. Look, uh, no matter what grade you're in, the coach has confidence in you to hand your ball off in this situation. And as a freshman, you know he has confidence Absolutely. in you. Absolutely. And what I like is they're in the same formation. They're running the same play. They're just giving it to different people. I mean, and that's what's nice is that they're throwing a lot at the Ottawa Glendorf defense right now. And like you said earlier, we haven't really even seen Brady Kirk <laughs> right. at all. Right. You know? Henderson's in the gun. He looks across the field. He's being pursued heavily. He's taken down. The Titan defense takes him down right around the 35-yard line. And that was a great job. It was a great defensive call there uh, by Ottawa Glandorf to, to call that blitz. Uh, you know, and Eli, that's Elida's first pass Watch of this. the game. Yeah. And you can see that the pressure there, uh, Henderson really had nowhere to go. Great job by the defense of Ottawa Glandorf. So that puts us at third and 16. So Larkin Henderson's going to have to make some decisions here. What a great uh, luxury to have with Larkin Henderson to know that you can get out of the pocket and create some things. But that time he was just pursued on both sides. I love the way they contained him in the pocket. 
Yeah, absolutely, and he's dangerous. So the fact that they were able to contain him is a, is a big win. So here's Henderson in the gun. He gets rolls to his left, looks downfield, being pursued by the Titan defense. Was going to throw it. Now he's really being pursued. He turns fleet, goes back to the right side. He's got a lot of green in front of him. Here he goes up the field, and he's taken down at the 30-yard line. So what looked to be maybe a promising play once he turned around turned into some good pursuit by the Titans. Yeah, I think he ran 45 <laughs> yards, but he gained three. <laughs> so, That's a but, great call. But, uh, you know, what, what, that's just the athletic ability that you see in there I mean he he's all over the place and you can see those defenders they worked on form tackling all week I promise you and uh, there was not a lot of form tackling because Larkin Henderson is so elusive and I look at this it is fourth and 12 and it looks to me like coach Harmon is going to go for it I love the aggressive play and really if you're not confident in your field goal kicker you can't punt the ball here so not, not too bad of a play and and OG has shown so far that they're not they're, they're struggling on offense so this is a smart decision to go yeah. for it and just take a shot here comes Henderson he's got a man in motion he gets the snap, looks across the field, being pursued heavily. He's going to be taken down. Oh, no, he gets away from him. He goes to his right, looks down the field, throws it into the end zone. He's got a man down there. It's pick oh, no, batted down, which was a really smart play by the Ottawa Glendorf defender. Yeah, very smart. You know, uh, sometimes you teach kids, you know, the kids want the interceptions. They want the stats. Uh, but that was a great job of knowing the situation and knowing that it was fourth down. We do have a flag here on the, on the sideline right after Henderson threw the ball. I didn't see what happened. Well, maybe we'll see it here we'll on the replay. We'll see our official officiating crew tonight. Jim Epperly, Ben Kramer, Kevin Mangus, John Jacobs, and Carl Schlegel calling the uh, I think we're going to get a late hit or an unsportsmanlike penalty on Ottawa Glendorf. Yeah, we'll take a look it, here. it looks like Henderson threw the ball, and uh, he, got, he got hit pretty good on the sideline right after he threw the ball. Um, Jim Epperly, great official. Oh, he'll, absolutely. he'll get this figured out. Walter Ross for OG was down in coverage, and, and he was going to make the play, and he just batted it down, and I think that's a great play on his part. So we got a personal foul against Ottawa Glendorf. That's going to give him a first down. And th those are the things that when you got young guys on the field, <laughs> they're trying to establish that, hey, Coach, I can do this, I can play hard. But and I'm not saying that you know sure, it, sure. they're just emotional and, and that those kind of things happen. So you know uh, that that could be a youth inexperience there because they had to play well defended. 341 on the scoreboard. Our scoreboard is courtesy of Web Insurance Agency, serving Lyme and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lyme and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. I'd like to see that scoreboard lit up a little more here. So get some action here. So Larkin Henderson goes into the gun. He's got a single set back in Tyler Carter. He's got one in motion to the left and to the right. Well, he might have too many men in motion, and he did. <laughs> They're going to get a false start on the Bulldogs. Well, there's, there's still. I mean, it's, it's week three. You think that uh, they'd have all this ironed out, but you got to realize they're starting a week earlier. They're getting less practice time. Uh, there's still a lot to be worked out here. So you can see that both teams still have some, some pregame jitters, I think. And, John, we, we, we looked at the student section earlier, and they got construction clothes on. But I don't know if you looked in the end zone. We've got a huge student section out there. So Elida's going right into the heart of that student section. And it looks like they got all kinds of NBA, NBA jerseys. <laughs> it's NBA night. So here comes the Bulldogs. They go left to right, breaking up the middle. They'll be taken down at right around the 10-yard line. That's number four for the Dogs, Tyler Carter, the 5'9 senior running back. Big time hard yards there. You know, and I like Tyler Carter. He's uh, he's not a very big guy, 5'9", 170, but he plays hard. You can see he's uh, technique-wise, he's, he's protecting the football, he's, he's running low, and uh, he's getting an opportunity to, to make some plays tonight. So really, John, OG's kind of taking the pass away right now in the first quarter. They've really limited Larkin Henderson, so the dogs just continuing to stay on the ground. Well, and that's, and that's why they've, they've had such an effective running game this year. They've put a lot of time into the running game, and you can see the fruits of that labor right now because, you know, sometimes teams do. They, You know, as a defensive coordinator, one of the things you want to do is take away what a team does well. And so when you have another thing that you can do well, it's really uh, tough to defend. So Tyler Carter picks up the tough yards. That'll make it third and two with 2.40 to go. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Ottawa Glandorf High School. Big WBL match tonight. The Dogs t try to stay undefeated. And the Ottawa Glendorf Titans trying to get on the win column. So here comes Larkin Henderson. He's in the gun. He's got Tyler Carter beside him. Henderson's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll to the right, looking for a crease. He's going to be taken down, getting some tough yards. He'll go to about the four-yard line. He's going to pick up the first down. Yeah, I love that play call. Uh, you know, 
if you look at defensive structure, and not to bore the fans with you know coaching perspectives, but a lot of times defensively you don't plan to cover the quarterback. You cover everybody sure. else, and that's why it's so hard, tough to defend when you have a very good runner. And I really like that call because they have all blockers on board there. One of the blockers I seen was uh, – Tyler Seifker, number 58, sure. he's their center, sophomore, doing a nice job blocking to the whistle. That's a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. They're our first down sponsor. So here comes Henderson. He's got Carter beside him in the backfield. He's got two to the left, one to the right. Henderson, high snap, gives it off to Carter. Carter cuts to the middle. Going to be taken down right about the three-yard line. Get a gain of one. And now you're close. And, and I think the, the, the question now is when you run a spread offense, we've seen you lie to under center once, and they fumbled. When you're sure. running a spread offense, it, this is where I think it gets difficult. Do you go under center or do you just stay with what you're doing? Sure. You know, in the spread, I think you just stay with what you're doing. And, let, you know, Larkin Henderson makes some decisions here. And now we see uh, Brady Kirk back on the field. Uh, so maybe, you know, we'll see, you know, if we get him involved, it looks like they are going to go under center yeah. here. So. so Henderson will go under center. He's got Brady Kirk behind him. He's got three to the left. Let's see if Kirk gets the call here. They'll pitch it back to Kirk to the left side. Tries to get around the end. Brady Kirk gets into the end zone. Touchdown, dogs. You called it, John Zerby. You absolutely called it. He's a force. I, I really like Brady Kirk. He uh, runs hard. Uh, he's aggressive, and you can tell he was. Uh, they were not going to stop him from getting in the end zone tonight. Our touchdown sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsing for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale Concrete is our touchdown sponsor. Let's hope Dale gets mentioned a lot tonight. That's a lot of fun for our viewers. <laughs> well, you know, it's fun for these Elida fans. You can see that they really oh, turned pumped. out they're tonight. Pumped. They Absolutely. are pumped. Uh, like you were saying, the student sections are pumped. I'm seeing some 90s basketball jerseys <laughs> back over there. In the I Ottawa saw Grandma Ma over there, yes, Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a jersey I had in seventh grade. So uh, I, I love it. That kick is up and good with 109 to go in the first quarter from Otto Glandorf. The Elida Bulldogs, they lead 7 nothing. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Back here at Ottawa Glendorf High School, where a big Brady Kirk just takes it into the end zone, and gives the dogs a seven and nothing lead. Look, we got a lot of analysts that work for us, but uh, that's as good a call as I've seen. John, you called it, Brady Kirk with the ball. Well, I got lucky. So <laughs> he, he's their leading rusher and well. scored the most touchdowns. So <laughs> and really, the two. It really wasn't that brilliant, to be honest. With you. <laughs> All right, okay, John, I'm just trying to help you out. Buddy. I appreciate that though. <laughs> OG brings the ball out to about the 25. Nice return. Let's see if the Titans can get something going. If they can string together three or four first downs, move the ball down, flip the field a little bit they got to feel good about that yeah you know and I think right now it's not let's not it's not about let's score let's sure, just sure. get a first down you know let's get some confidence like you said and maybe start to build on it and you, you can see the youth and inexperience uh, in some of these guys but uh you know like I said first down get a first down that's the goal right here and John you look at their stats on the year averaging three and a half points a game giving up 15 and a half points something's got to give and look the, the coaching staff over here is top notch they're going to get yeah. it figured out yeah they they do they always do and, and it's early and you'll see them later in the year really get better but right now they're running into a really good Elida team so Mormon hands the ball off this is number 17 for the Titans you know, that's, a, that's kind of a smart play call because we're talking about this defensive line of Elida. You know, they've got the, the great defensive ends and they've got some big guys on the interior. You know, now they're, they're challenging uh, the outside run game a little bit, trying to get a guy outside and trying to, to maybe move the, the chains that way. And I think that's a good idea, you know, to, to try to, you know, go man-to-man -man inside with some of these big guys. I'm not sure that that's going to be the, the best uh, plan right yeah, now. I apologize for not knowing. I said number 17. I'm, my roster's misplaced that. So we'll have to get him identified here. So there's Mormon onto the right side, throws the ball out. He's got a completion. They'll take it across to about the 43-yard line. Yeah, uh, Mormon, a nice pass. Uh, it looks like they're going to pick up a first down. That's the Carter Dueling, 6'2", 200-pound senior. And quick passes, you know. This, Absolutely. The, the, that, that screen right there is almost like a like a sweep. I mean, it's simple, it's sure. easy, and it it's gets a long yards. Hand off, long yeah, hand absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that'll be first and 10. Another first down. Our first down sponsor tonight is Union Bank. That's a Union Bank first down. Union Bank is committed to you. So here come the Titans with 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. They're down 7 0 to the visiting Bulldogs from Elida. Mormon's in the gun. He's got one to the right, two to the left. He's got a single set back. He gets the snap, hands the ball off. Goes off to the left side looking for some blocks, trying to find those blockers. They'll be taken down at about the 46-yard line. I love the defensive effort by Isaac Earl, number 15, is a 5-foot, 9-inch junior from Elida. 
you know, corners, uh, they, they don't tackle a lot. You know, nice. they, they're out there and they normally cover <laughs> people. And, and uh, they you know, like they, pass coverage. They, they do. And they like to look good, you know. But, uh, boy, he did a great job there coming up and making a nice tackle. So that's going to end our first quarter from Ottawa Glendorf High School. After one quarter, the Elida Bulldogs lead the OG Titans 7 0 right here on WOSN. John Stocker Dennis is tonight's premier sponsor for the Ida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Dr. John Stocker is our premier sponsor. So here we go, second and five from the 46-yard line. Titans trying to push the ball down the field. Now we've got our updated roster, John. We feel a little better. Huh? Yeah. We, we got a roster here. We just didn't have the right one. So <laughs> There's Mormon in the gun. He's going to roll to his right, goes back to the left side, looking for yardage. He's got good game there. He's down the right or the left side. He's going to take it in, John, for a Titan touchdown. Wow, are you kidding me? Landon I, Mormon. I love it. I mean, that, what a great play by Landon Mormon. You know, that, that was not where the play was supposed no, to go. No, you're right. And uh, he did a fantastic job of reversing his field. As you can see there, blockers up front. Elida's got defenders in the backfield, but he just reverses his field. And, boy, he's got some wheels. He turns it on here. And he does. Elida defense just, you know, absolutely, you know, they, they're chasing him down with well, speed. Look, John, we, we talked about it in the break. That's, that's athleticism because Elite is really fast, and especially on turf tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Elite is aggressive, so sometimes sure. when you're over aggressive, that can come back to bite you. It wasn't a bad defensive play, no, but, but Mormon made a great play. There's the snap. They fumbled the snap. They're looking to push it into the end zone. Takes it over the right side. Can he get in? He's going to be taken down. Wow, he was hit by Parker Krim. Parker Krim said, not on my watch. And he's going to feel that tomorrow morning because <laughs> that, uh, that was a great hit by Krim. And a nice job because that was, you know, I, th I think they were trying to kick it. I don't think that was a No, 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 to, you're right, you know, yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a, a great uh, job uh, by the holder, to uh, Grant Schrader, to get the ball and try to score. But uh, great play by Krim. Seven to six. So OG misses on the extra point. So, Let's take a recap of the first quarter, John. We look at, uh, we talked about earlier, Elida tries to establish that run and does a really nice job. Did a fantastic job. And I think the other thing that they did is by establishing the run, they were in the uh, they were in the OG's territory the entire first quarter. It felt like OG didn't even get the ball past midfield. I don't, I don't think they did. I think that was about the first time that they did the whole game. And so uh, that big play is uh, helping uh, OG keep into the game. And, uh, you know, they've got new life. I mean, Elida's a little bit shocked right now, and, and OG's sure. got a little bit new life. And, you know, we, we look at OG, and, and they've struggled this quarter, mm -hmm. uh, but here they are 7-6. to six. they got to feel good about where they are. I tell you, like I said earlier, they're just hoping for a first down, and now <laughs> yeah, it's 7-6. to six. Right. I mean, they've got to be feeling really good about themselves. So, so our instant replay sponsor tonight is Structure. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Well, we've got a great booth tonight, and the windows are open, and the breeze is coming in here. Two weeks ago at Spencer, it was 120 degrees. Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is great. I mean, you can tell that September's here. Oh, yeah. The humidity's gone. Uh, high school. This feels like high school football Oh, it tonight. is. You're absolutely right. So OG's going to kick off to Elida. We've got two deep. <clears throat> and this is Walsh, the freshman. He's going to get the ball at about the 10-yard line. He's going to bring it up the left side. He's got one to beat. He gets to the middle of the field. He's going to be taken down by the kicker. Wow. You gotta be kidding me, Amari Walsh! Speed to burn. And you know this this game's getting fun because now <laughs> we're starting to see the big plays. We're starting to see some good things happen. There is a flag out on the field, got, unfortunately. That's laundry, yeah, laundry on the field. But wow, what a great athletic play by Walsh! You can see the move here, and doop, and here he goes, and he that's nice. Just about gone. They're gonna bring that one back. It looks like to me. Let's see what the call is here. Jim Epperly's gonna walk this one off. And that's going to back it up way back. So a block in the back, if I'm reading our official correct. And I think I am. It's going to take it back to the 20-yard line. So what looked like a promising return and with some great field position, it now backs the dogs up. So the momentum right now is all OG. You know, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. The momentum is huge. And you could see it there for just the half second. Elida kind of, you know, got that momentum back. And, I don't know, you can kind of feel the air kind of go out of them. Sure. It's going to be interesting yeah. to see how they respond, you know, uh, you know, now that they're kind of deep in their own territory and having to go the entire field to see how they respond offensively. So Larkin Henderson is in the gun. We're going to get some more of David Etzcorn and some more of uh, Brady Kirk. What do you think, Coach? I think you're going to see a <laughs> lot of both of those guys right now. So here comes Henderson. He's going to keep it himself. He gets through the line. A nice little job by him as he gets about three yards. 
and that was a tough three. I mean, it looked like sure he, was. And, and, and he was, you know, he made a nice move there. And honestly, at the end, if he if he breaks that last tackle, he's probably yeah. going to go for about twenty. I but, was uh, waiting to call that because yeah. he, he could have got there. Yeah, it was a, a great tackle uh, for Ottawa Glendorf. Walter Ross is a six foot one inch, uh, one hundred eighty pound a senior, doing a great job there, but uh, kept him to three yards. Well, you look at this OG defense, and they and they, they held Wapakoneta last week to 14 points, and, you know, that's a big time. Uh, I don't want to say it's a uh, a uh, motivational loss. Not, we don't talk about that, but uh, it's got to help you thinking, hey, we can play with the big boys. Well, it's it's a it's a fundamental thing. When sure. you can play great defense, you know, offensively sometimes you get kind of limited by how athletic you are. Defense, um, you know, you can play fundamental defense and be productive, and you know that you're going to get that from a Coach Schreiner team. Sure. I heard one of the guys earlier in the booth saying that uh, OG is going to play all ten games this year on turf. That's you know that's, that's great. They won't even have to wash a uniform <laughs> all season. <laughs> the, the moms, moms will be happy, <laughs> won't they? <laughs> the moms will be really happy. So here we go, third and three with 10:28 to go. Seven to six, Elida leads. This is Larkin Henderson in the gun. He's got one to the right. He's got a man in the slot, and he's got two to the left. He looks across the field, waits for that call. See what they do here on third and three. They got a man in motion. They're going to hand it off. Go to the left side, and he's going to pick up another first down. Another Union Bank first down. I love David Edscorn. Oh, man. man he's he, exciting, isn't he? He is, and he plays with passion. You can see him. He gets up. He's fired up. He's running hard. He's putting his head down. His knees are just going. Uh, yeah, I'd be tempted to give him the ball a lot. So Elida's staying with the game plan, Coach. They're going to run the ball, and they're going to do it until OG stops him. And I coached for a long time, and People used to make fun of me. We were a wing T team, and we'd only throw the ball like three times a game. Well, here's a spread team, and they're not throwing, they're not the, ball. throwing the ball. At they're all. coming right. after it. You know, they're getting after it up front. I love it. Look, a lot of times you got to take what the defense will give you, and the, and the novice fan doesn't realize that. That you look if they're if they're stacking that line, you can you know make some changes. But you know when they're spread out like that, go at them. Absolutely. So here comes Henderson. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to throw across the field. That was nearly picked off. And let's see, his intended target was number 83 for the Dogs. And maybe that's a game plan by Ottawa. I know that uh, they're, they were in a three-man front that uh, that down, and maybe they're saying, you know, if they're going to beat us, they're going to have to beat us up front and running the football. You know, Henderson's been lethal with his arm. Um, and so uh, game plan-wise, it, it looks at, you know, that the, the run game is there. That's probably why you've seen so much uh, running from Elida. So we're at uh, second and 10 with 9.30 to go on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Henderson's in the gun. He's got two offset. He's got one in motion. He's going to hand the ball off. There goes Ed Scorn around the left side. He picks up maybe a two yards on the game, and he goes down. And he's getting up slow. Let's hope David Ed Scorn's all right. So looks well, like he's okay. I like the effort from uh, Caleb Yoder on off, uh, Ottawa Glendar's defense. Uh, defensive end, he really strung that play out. They're, they're running like a jet sweep, or sure. some coaches call it a fly sweep, and they're running it into the boundary, which means that you're on the close hash and you're running into that to that sideline. And he just did a great job. He didn't make the tackle, but he made the play because David Edscorn had nowhere to run but out out of bounds. So we're at third and nine, nine twenty-six to go. Dogs lead seven to six here from Ottawa Glendorf High School. Here comes Henderson in the gun. He's got a single setback. He's going to fake the handoff. He's looking down, looking along across the field. He's got a man and a nice pitching catch. Nice job by the dogs, and boy, that was a bullet across the middle. That was a great throw and a great catch by Noah Schweitzer, a six foot two inch, 190 pound. They're calling him a tight end. He <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know about that either, but boy, that was a great route and a great ball by Larkin Henderson. Noah Schweitzer, 6'2, 190 pounds. What a target to throw to. You, they just have so many weapons. I mean, uh, Coach Harmon yeah. probably is running out of people to try to give the ball to because he's got uh, so many guys to give the ball to. I'm, I'm sure he'll find somebody. Yeah, to you're right. You're right. <laughs> so first down, we've got another Union Bank first down. Here comes Henderson in the gun. He's got one to his right, two to the left. He's going to hand the ball. I mean, he's going to keep it himself, go up the middle. Boy, you pull that ball back quick and you run up the middle, and he's going to break that one of these times. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's, it, that's not a zone read play, but it's a play that sure. it's very similar. Uh, he's reading the interior lineman, and so you can see that they're, they've got pressure on the outside, and Henderson pulled it there. And you're right, uh, sooner or later, and they're going to bring that kind of pressure, he's going to break and one. A lot of people don't understand that. Uh, when we, you know, we talk about you know, running the ball up the middle, people, why do they just run right up there? You're keeping the honest. You're going to break that for something else. And it's, it's really sometimes it's setting up something in the future. Yeah, you said it perfectly. I mean, a lot of times you have to establish something to set something else up. Sure. And unless you do that consistently, then uh, you can't do that later. There goes Ed Scorn in motion. 
Ball's going to be handed off to Brady Kirk. And, oh, he's taken down. I'm sorry, that is Tyler Carter. And Tyler Carter was just surrendered by the Titans. One of the things I'm starting to see is some confidence in yes. Ottawa Glendor's yep. defense. You can see early on, I mean, uh, Elida's offensive line was just pushing them around. But now you're starting to see some penetration. Now you're starting to see some excitement. Uh, they're starting to believe in what they can do. Yeah, big number 16, Carter Doolin, 6'2", 198-pound senior. Does a great job of coming in and making that play. So here we are at third and 16. So a big call here from midfield. 7.33 to go. Dogs lead 7-6. to six. Henderson's back in the gun. He's got Tyler Carter to his left. He's got two to the right, one in the slot. He looks across the field. He's going to go deep over the middle, and he's got his – oh, my goodness. I started talking too soon. He missed Noah Schweitzer there on that play. Well, Noah Schweitzer ran a great route, yep. and Ottawa Glanorf didn't bring many. They only brought three, and Elida Max protected there, but Henderson really did throw a great ball, and uh, maybe Schweitzer just – for a second there was getting his eyes on the end zone and you can see it slip through his hands. Great but, route though. Yeah, but two things, that was a great route and it was a great recognition of him finding the seam completely yeah. open, completely yep. open. Yep, and that's a hard throw. Sure I mean, that's is. not an easy throw and, and Henderson did a great job and you know, OG's gotta feel, you know, they gotta oh, feel I'm good sorry. though. I mean, even though that they, they, they held him, I mean, that was a, that's a great stop. We got Alex Schrader back deep. He's gonna, oh, they're gonna fair catch it so they'll take the ball. And they'll take shot there. So 7-6, to 7-15 to go. OG down by one to the visiting Bulldogs. Key WBL matchup here. OG trying to get in the win column. Elida trying to stay undefeated. Elida really, really exploded last week against Kenton. Really put up some points there and did a great job against the Wildcats. So they want to continue that. So really, when you take a look at what we've seen the first half, you're right. OG really has slowed them down. They really have. I mean, to, to hold them to seven points at this point, Elida scored a lot of points, and they're explosive. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the telltale sign of a good, well-coached team. Oh, that's, yeah. just, that's just OG. I mean, it doesn't matter if they have all freshmen out there. They're going to be well-coached. So this is Mormon in the backfield. He's in the gun. He's got Nick Ellerbrock in the backfield with him. He's going to fake the ball. Oh, and he's picked off across the middle. The dogs are going to take it up the right side. Number seven for Elida. That's Jackson Cobalt, the six foot, 175 pound junior, just playing center field, coach. Oh, and he just did a great job of just reading the quarterback's eyes. I mean, it was it was really a one man route. Yeah. I mean, it was a fake, and then you know the the seam across the middle. And uh, Jackson Cobalt played quarterback last year uh, when Larkin Henderson was hurt. So now he's playing receiver and defensive back, and. He sounds, looks like he can do it all. And Mormon had Ryan Ross open for just a split second. Yeah. But Jackson Cobalt steps in there and does a great job. So two turnovers by the Titans, one for Elida. You know, we we got to see that slow down. Yeah, and that, that margin of error, like we said, sure. you know, especially down in, in this territory. Game, yeah. yeah, this this territory here, it's it's really uh, it's something that you can't do uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a chance to win this game. So here comes Larkin Henderson, the third-year starter at quarterback. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball off. Oh, thought he was going to be taken down the backfield. He's going to try to get to the right side. He spins and makes a nice gain out of what I thought was going to be nothing. David Escorn, I don't, I don't <laughs> know what he's, uh, he's eating for breakfast, but I need some of that. Oh. Man, he looks good. He's, he's breaking tackles. He's spinning. He's got his head down. And, uh, boy, what a great run by David Escorn. David Escorn, watch this as you think he's going to be taken down for a five, six-yard loss and does some spinning and reminds me of the old Braxton Miller spin against Virginia oh. Tech a couple years ago. Now, I'm not saying David Edscorn's Braxton Miller. But, <laughs> but he's, he's close, right? That's he's right. close. That's right for us, that's right. <laughs> so here come the dogs. Second and four, 6.30 to go. They're up 7-6 to six on the 19-yard line. Larkin Henderson's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off. Off to the left side. He's got one to go, and he's taken down. That's number four, Tyler Carter. He goes for about four or five yards. And I alluded to it earlier, but, you know, Carter, I like the way he runs. You know, he's he's just kind of smooth. I mean, there's nothing really um, to look at him to say, wow, there's nothing there uh, size-wise. But you can see here on the replay, the line's getting movement, and he just he keeps his head up. And he, great stiff arm technique, falling forward, doing a lot of good things. That's another Union Bank first down. Union Bank is committed to you. They're our first down sponsor. So here comes Henderson. He's got Carter to the left. He's got two to the right. Henderson rolls out, looks to the right, goes deep to the end zone. He's got a man out there and just overthrows him. Yeah, and that's a that's a shot that I think uh, Henderson knew he was going to take early. Uh, he had Jackson Kovalt in the back of the end zone and, and, and probably thought, you know, let's take a shot and go against Grant Schrader there, uh, the corner, and, uh, and he did. And it looks like we've got an OG tightened down, and I think, if I'm correct, it looks like number 50, Caleb Yoder. And I could be wrong, but I thought that's the number I saw. 
Uh, he is being attended to by the trainers. And it's seven to six here. We'll take a timeout when we come back. We'll have the rest of this action here in the second quarter. You're watching High School Sports on WOSA. Back here at Ottawa Glendale, Caleb Yoder was the Titan that was down. John, it looks like he got off the field on his own accord. So uh, best of luck to that young man. Yeah, Caleb Yoder, tough kid. Uh, it's interesting, you know, Coach Schreiner was out there trying to get him up, and he was struggling. Yeah, Mom, mom, came, came, mom <laughs> came out and said, get up, and he got up and walked off the field. I so saw Mom come out. That was what great. A, what a great scene. Awesome. She had his button on her shirt. Oh, yeah. Know, she was fired up. Get up and get it back in there is probably what she's saying. So here comes Henderson. He's going to fake the handoff to Carter, and he's going to go for about maybe a yard or two, but he's keeping that interior line honest. Larkin Henderson leading that offense right down the field. That'll make it third and 10 with 5.35 to go. You know, Elida has seemed to move the ball well until they get down here in the red zone. Yes, and you're right. And then it's, it's a struggle. And and the schemes that they're running aren't big play schemes. So, you know, that, that OG defense has really done a great job in the red zone, tightening up, you know, pressing up, especially on the outside. Sure. So third and 10, 5.15 to go. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Ottawa Glendorf High School. Dogs come into town. They're leading 7-6, to six, trying to put more on the board. Henderson's in the gun. He's got Carter to his right, and Henderson's going to take a timeout. And that right there is your third-year leadership. That, that's, that's, a, right. that's a kid that knows exactly what they need to do. Yeah, it looks like they had a hard count on, and it looks like it didn't work. And he knew right away, hey, this is not going to work. Let's call a timeout. Uh, you've got a few here. at the. You haven't used any in sure. four half, so we might as well use them and talk and make sure that we get this right. John, you've uh, got the opportunity this year to see several teams. I know we're only three weeks in. Who are you impressed with so far? Yeah, Elida's won. Uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously, uh, you know, looking at the WBL, being we're very good. Uh, you know, uh, Offensively, uh, they just are so impressive. Aiden Pratt, quarterback at Van Wert, you know, feel like he's like Henderson. He's been there forever. He, says he does um, seem like he's yeah, been there forever. Yeah. When is he going to graduate? Yeah, <laughs> and, and Coach Recker's just done an outstanding job. So they're impressive. Uh, I'm a little biased to St. Mary's. Worked there for a while. Sure. St. Mary's, uh, they're always good. Coach Fry. I know you're going to find uh, this hard to believe, John, but they're leading the WBL in rushing. Uh, it's amazing. It, it, it is, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, I know last week, <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I know last week they they threw two passes. So that was, uh, you know, they should be leading the league in, in you know, in rushing. But, no, I, I just am really impressed with Coach Fry, uh, Coach Bo Fry, sure. and their entire program and what they do. So, you know, it's kind of the same old story, really, in the WBL. Walpock's tough. Um, and, and that's kind of, you know, those those teams there are the, the top tier the teams in the league. So here we go. Dogs in the gun. This is Larkin Henderson. He's got Tyler Carter to the left. He's looking across the field. He throws into the end zone. He's got a man for a Elida touchdown. Noah Schweitzer, the big tight end, comes up with a six. What a great play. And I'll tell you, I loved to see what uh, Larkin Henderson did here. He was poised in the pocket, laid a perfect strike there. Got Elida on the board, and that's a big touchdown right here before the second, uh, second half. John, I always say this. When a team calls a timeout, they come out from a timeout and execute something like that, that's a really well-coached team and a bunch of kids that have bought into what they're doing. Yeah, and, you know, they didn't panic at all. No, they no, just, no. They just they knew what they were doing. They called timeout. They got it together, and he was wide open. So what a great play. So the kick is up for the extra point, and that makes it 14-6 to on the Web Insurance scoreboard. So with 4.50 to go, the Atlanta Bulldogs taking a commanding 14-6 to lead, watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School. All Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our touchdown sponsor. Our scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. So we need to make a correction, Coach. We, uh, we did not have the proper numbers. Keaton Hockey is wearing 83 tonight. Our program and everybody's program up there had him at number 12, so we apologize. For yeah, you know, and thank you to the Elida fans, yes. uh, especially Darren Sharp down there, former high school principal of Elida. He uh, had to reach out there and find out. Evidently, uh, Keaton Hockey had his jersey cut off at some point uh, in the last few <laughs> weeks, and so now okay. he's wearing number 83. Well, he just made uh, a heck so of a catch. So. Absolutely. 83 <laughs> works for him. I'd say I'd stick well, with that one. Look, Noah Schweitzer's been mentioned above. Tonight, That's so. right. <laughs> his family's got to be happy. Absolutely. So here comes the Titans. Mormon's in the gun. He's got one to his right. He's got a single set on the left. Mormon takes the ball, hands the ball off to the left side. He's going to be upended by a host of Bulldog defenders. Well, I think if you're Ottawa at this point, 
once again, you're just you're trying to get something positive going. We've sure. had one big play, but really before that, they haven't had a ton of, of positive momentum. So I think you try to establish some momentum. You, you, obviously, you're trying to score, but at the same time, you've only got four minutes to go, and, and, and it's it's going to be a tough road here to get a touchdown. So Nick Ellerbrock was the ball carrier on that play. So second and six with 4.18 to go. Dodge lead 14 to six from here in Otto Glandorf High School. Mormon's in the gun. He's got one to his left. He's got two receivers to the left. Mormon's going to keep it himself. Go off the left side. He's been hit hard by that line. Picks up maybe two yards. That's going to bring up third and four, third and three. Yeah, I love how uh, middle linebacker Brady Kirk just scraped over the top. And you can see his, <laughs> You can see the, the pad. You can see it here on the replay. You see him here. He's, he just scrapes in and boom, right there. You see that contact, and there he goes. I love it. Uh, nice play by Brady Kirk. Boy, when you got a bunch of young kids like Elida has and, and they're aggressive like this. Because, look, sometimes we see kids who play football but just aren't real aggressive. Yep. I don't see any of them out there. Yeah. I mean, they, they, these kids want to no. hit. And, you know, I've had coaches ask me, how do you get guys to be aggressive? You don't. I mean, right. you, 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 you either do or you don't. It. Yeah, you either yeah. do or you don't. And so it's tough to, to coach that up. But you got a lot of great uh, uh, kids out here today that are being aggressive, just like you said, Danny. So here's Mormon in the backfield. He's going to hand the ball off to number 17. That is Nick Ellerbrock again. And that's going to bring up a fourth down, about fourth and maybe two. And uh, from the 35-yard line, I, 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 well, I don't know if they're going to go for it here or not. We'll have to take a look. Now i got to give props to Elida's defensive coordinator, uh, Coach Randy Woods. Coach Woods was the head coach at Allen East for yes, a long time. Yes, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, is now defensive coordinator here at Elida. And, uh, boy, he just does an outstanding job uh, coaching these guys up, fundamentally sound. And you can see Coach Woods down there. He's got his Jordans on, and he's still, you know, he's still doing it, coaching it up there on the sidelines. Well, here we go, fourth and one on the 34-yard line. So a big gamble here if they go for it. I, I, I'm not sure they're going to do it here. Let's see what they decide to do, and they're going to take a timeout. So put your coaching hat on, Coach Zerby. What do you do here? Oh, you got to punt. I mean, in this situation, there's really <laughs> Not no even choice. hesitation. No, no, you got to punt. Now, you had to make some folks over in Estville a little <laughs> upset with that kind of philosophy, right? Well, you know, <laughs> No, no throwing made people upset, you know, in Spencerville. But that's that's another story for another day. But uh, you know, punting's an easy is an easy thing, especially right before the half. And especially, do you really want to give Larkin Henderson the ball on that side of the field with just a, a few minutes to go? I don't. And tonight, so you want to make sure you do that. Sure. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. And I think this is a good time for OG to, just like earlier, Eli to call a timeout. It's a different situation, but it's a good time a time for OG to get the timeout and get everybody under control, understand what they're doing. This is a big play um, because special teams-wise, if you get a bad snap or, a, you know, a bad punt, it could really come back to haunt you. So you want to make sure your special teams are good to go here. So Ottawa has decided to punt, and we are going to get to see David Edscorn. And look, if it's a low kick and he gets some speed up, this kid is super dangerous. We've talked about him all night. He's standing on the 35-yard line. And I think if you're Elida, you want a fair catch, but if you can get the ball past the 50, sure. you're in great shape. So here's the snap. Almost blocked, and it's a high kick, and Edscorn's going to call for a fair catch, and a great kick, to be honest with you. Got a lot of air underneath it, so a great job by the Ottawa special teams. We don't talk about that enough. That's a great play. It's a great play. The punter did a fantastic job of getting the ball off. You know, I was impressed with Elida. They came after it, but, you know, typically when kids go after it, you know, you know coach it up so that they don't run into the punter, but about 90% of the times they run into the punter. Elida did a great job of staying off the punter, but, you know, OG did a fantastic job. I don't think they could have asked for better field position uh, for, for, you know, for that punt. Now they are in a good spot to defend and hopefully get out of here only down uh, a two sc or one score before halftime. And you saw here on our instant replay, he had to make a tough catch. He had to jump a little bit, and he did a great job of avoiding the rush. So here come the Bulldogs with 2.29 to go. They're up 14-6, to six, looking to put some more on the board. Coach, do you air it out here with 2.29 to go, or do you stay with the game plan? No, I think you have to try to score. The, the, Ottawa's going to get the football back in the, in the second half, so I think you got to take a couple shots here. Here's Henderson. He's going to keep the ball himself, and he's taken down, and he does not get any gain there. So a great job by the OG defense. They read that the whole way. Yeah, OG's getting aggressive. Like I said earlier up front, they're really starting to push Eli's offensive line back, and 
you can see here that uh, they're, 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 they're really starting to get movement. Austin Moss, uh, six foot, 185 uh, uh, lineman for the Titans. Boy, got great pressure there. Coach, for our fans at home watching the game, when Larkin Henderson tucks that ball under, is he watching for the defensive end or is he watching the interior line? Could be both. It yep. could be it, certain plays. He's watching the defensive end. They're not blocking the defensive end. Certain plays, they're going to leave an interior lineman unblocked, and that's the guy he's reading. Here comes Henderson. He's going to hand the ball off. They go right up the middle. Gets about a gain of about six yards. Some nice tough yardage. So they're keeping the clock running. Well, and it looks like they're not going to take a shot. And that's you know that maybe Elida feels good. Maybe Coach Harmon feels like we're starting to get the momentum. Uh, we don't want to give uh, OG the opportunity to get any momentum back from halftime. I, I would say Elida has the momentum now. So Yeah, and also, Coach, that was Brady Kirk. He hasn't ran the ball much, and you got a tired OG defense. Maybe they were hoping to, you know, knock a home run there. So who knows what they're thinking. But I, I kind of agree with you. I don't, it doesn't look like they're looking to, you know. Well, and it's safe, and I, and I don't blame them. I mean, I sure. think that right now you've dominated the game. Besides one play, uh, OG's really, you know, um, has struggled to move the ball, and, and you're in control. So it's a smart decision. Yeah, and here comes Brady Kirk. He carries the ball again, and that's another Union Brady Bank first down. So they'll move the chains up with 103 to go. So there's still plenty of time here for the dogs, and this is some good hard yards getting by Brady Kirk. So funny, when you're coaching, you're like, yeah, let's do the smart thing. Let's get into halftime. When you're a fan, you're like, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. Let's, go, let's, go. let's go. Come on. <laughs> oh, goodness. Here come the dogs. 48 seconds to go. Henderson's in the gun. He's got one to his left. He's got two to the right. He's going to hand the ball off to Brady Kirk. Brady Kirk goes to the right side, squirts through the line, picks up about seven, but that looks like a holding call. And so far, I'd say it's been a pretty clean game. Sure I mean, has. We haven't yeah. seen a lot of uh, flags. The officials, I think, have done a really nice job. And, um, you know, it's been a clean game so far. Let's see what the call is. But the flag was thrown down right in the middle of the line, and I think it's going to be a holding call against Elida. And that's going to change everything now. You, you go back another ten yards, and... Uh, you pretty much about to be real conservative right now. Yeah, I think now you're you're giving it to Kirk up the middle yep. and, and just protecting the football and making sure that you can get to halftime with the lead. What's your philosophy here, Coach? Do you hand the ball off or just take a knee and go to the locker room? Because you're, 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 you know, you're in OG territory now. First and ten, I think you just take a knee. I mean, to be honest with you, because – I'm not telling you what to cut. No, 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 no. I don't have to worry about that, you know. No one's going to show up at my door tonight, you know, griping at me. But, uh, you know, I think you just take a knee, you get to halftime, and uh, I, don't, I don't think you're going to see OG. G try to take timeouts to, sure. to get a punt. I'll stick around. We'll have our halftime adjustments here. When we go to halftime, we'll bring you all the second half action. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Ottawa Glendorf High School, home of the Titans in this beautiful new turf. And it is fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. It is sure is bright blue and yellow, and the green's just popping, and just a great night for high school football. So Elida's just going to take the knee. 25 seconds to go here. I'm going to let it run down. So a clean half here, first half. Dogs take a 14 to 6 lead. Two turnovers by Eli Ottawa Glendorf, one by Elida, and that so far that's the difference. It's the difference, and I'll tell you, this is a fun game. I mean, this sure. is this is when you think of WBL football, this is what you think. Two hard-hitting teams playing aggressive, getting after it, and it's a close game. It's, it's a great night to be here watching football. So we're going to go to halftime. The Elida Bulldogs lead the Ottawa Glendorf Titans 14-6. to We'll come back with halftime adjustments. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School. Our halftime adjustment sponsor is Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss Center. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss is our halftime adjustment sponsor. John, let's get into the halftime adjustments and let's take a look at Ottawa down 14 to 6 right now. What do they need to do to get back in this game? Yeah, I think offensively they've got to they've got to create some long drives and maybe take some time off the clock and from what I felt like, I don't know if you felt this way, Danny, but I felt like Elida just had the ball the whole first they half. They did, you're you know, right, absolutely. It, they were on the yeah. field the entire time. So just getting first downs, getting on the field, keeping their defense off the field, I think will be, you know, very, very good for Ottawa. But, you know, if you're Coach Schreiner, maybe my standards are low, but 14-6, to 6, getting the ball in the second half, sure. I, I feel like you, you've got to feel good about that. You know absolutely. what I mean? So they're in striking distance. And Elida up 14-6. to 6. John, they ran, ran, ran the ball a lot. Didn't throw a lot of passes. When they did throw, they were effective at times, but they kept it on the ground. Yeah, and I think now is the time to maybe open it up a little bit. You know, they've been dominating up front, um, but we've seen later in the second quarter, Ottawa Glendorf's uh, defensive line starting to get a push. 
So I think this half you start to open it up a little bit, maybe some screens, uh, maybe some quick uh, uh, hitches and, and things across the middle just to get the offense going. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. Boy, I'd like to be a good coach like John Reed. What a, what John a coach Reed he was, was. He was uh, incredible. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I always looked up to him was is not only was he a great coach, but he was a, a counselor at the school, a part-time pastor on the side. He just influenced so many young people in, in the community of Coldwater, and what a great award that the WSN has always uh, awarded a, a very deserving coach in our area. You, were, you and I were talking earlier about uh, those kind of things as coaches, and both you and I have coached, and it's that, uh, that relationship you have with those kids and, and what you develop. I, I've said it for years. I, I continue to see kids that I coached 10, 15, 20 years ago, and it always makes you great when they come up. And the first thing they say is coach. That's what exactly. they call you. That's how they identify. And, you know, if you think about it, you still call your old coaches coach. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can't yeah. call them anything else. <laughs> but right. I, think, I think that's kind of the thing that gets overlooked sometimes. Maybe if you're not in that coaching circle, you don't understand it. It's those relationships. Yeah, the wins do matter. Yeah, the seasons do matter. Those are all important things. But it is always those relationships, um, you know. It's uh, it's always good to see former players and to see them oh, get yeah, married and sure. have families and you're just so proud that you, you're able to, to share that moment of time with them when you got to coach them. So it's very rewarding, no doubt. Absolutely. So, get set for the second half here from Ottawa Glendorf High School. The Elida Bulldogs have come into town, taking a 14 to six lead, trying to stay undefeated, trying to stay atop the WBL. And uh, boy, what a what a really a great position they're in right now. Oh, absolutely. And I think the thing for Elida is is that. Uh, you know, starting 2-0, and looking at that 3-0, and that's a spot that they haven't been in in a long time. And so, you know, looking ahead, you, you know, you can't look ahead right now, but, uh, you know, they've got a lot of momentum. And I know their second half of the season is pretty difficult. So, you know, getting off to a good start uh, early in the year is important. So Elida fields the second half kickoff here. Ottawa Glendorf kicking off. They've got one. There's Amari Walsh back deep. And number three for the dogs, David Edscorn. So two dangerous. Who do you kick to here, Coach? Oh, the up man. Let's do that. Uh, yeah, he, he went down a little too early there. The knee touched the ground. Well, that was a great call uh, by uh, OG to, to go ahead and kick it up to the Oh, you know, one of the up, up backs and not kick it to those two guys. How would you like to be at practice when those two guys are competing to, you know, uh, be on the kickoff return team? I mean, my goodness. You know, Coach, I don't want to call us out, but both you and I thought that OG was going to get the second half kickoff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I thought that. That shows you how much I know, which is very little. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my whole, uh, you know, thinking there at halftime, you guys, if you listen to this, fans, Look, don't just I, listen. I, I don't think Ben's going to come up and take well, you out of the booth. I, I don't know. I, I can't do this alone. <laughs> we are, we are semi-professional at this, Danny, so there you go. You're more okay. professional than me. so. All right, so here we go from the 22-yard line. The dogs will take over. Larkin Henderson brings his troops out. He's in the gun. He's got back to his left. He's got two to the right and one single to the right, or to the left, excuse me. Here's the handoff up the middle. Some tough yards by number 22, Brady Kirk. Oh, looked like he may have lost the ball and got out of there. They called that one dead, and uh, the dogs are not happy about that. Well, I think he was still moving his feet, and it looked like he went down. But from our angle, it'll it'll be nice to see the replay here in just a second. But um, I think the light of uh, coaches and sideline didn't think he was down. Maybe sure. he kind of landed on the top Take of the pile, and his feet were still going. What a great view here, maybe. You're, you are right, Coach. He did wow. not touch the ground. No, he did not. Wow, they're going to look at that tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the instant replay. We don't have that in high school, right? right? Here comes Brady Kirk. and Look, Coach, I said it earlier. They didn't use Brady Kirk a lot in the first half. I'm starting to figure it out. Maybe they were saving him for the second half. Yeah, he's, he's fresh, and they're going to give a healthy dose of Kirk this half. And you know, Kudos to the camera angle on that last oh. replay. Boy, our WSN staff doing an awesome job, and uh, that was great, great work there. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And that is another, oh, sorry about that. That is another Union Bank first down. So here comes Kirk again up the middle. He's getting some tough yards. He's going to get about three on that carry. It'll bring up second seven with 10.50 to go. Well, and I like Elida's mentality. You know, I said at halftime, you know, coming in that, you know, they had to take a shot, but, you know, I think they're kind of sticking to their guns here. I think they they know that they need to be physical, and they're they're making the challenge to Ottawa that they're going to run the ball, and this is what we are, and this is what we're going to do. I, I really like that mentality. 
those, those offensive linemen for, for Elida, they got to feel great about the fact that Coach Harmon puts that game plan in their hands, and, and they, it's working right now. Well, you know, a lot of times you look, you only focus on the skilled guys, but the guys up front, <laughs> they do all the dirty work. Absolutely. So we got a man in motion. They're going to hand the ball. No, Larkin Henderson's going to keep it himself. He's going to squirt through the line. He's going to pick up 13 big yards. Wow, that was a nice play, Coach. Well, I don't know about you. I don't know if you were you were probably not faked out, Danny. I was, <laughs> and I think David Etzcorn was too because he right. turned around and went, where's the ball? What a great fake by Larkin Henderson. Well, we talked about that play earlier in the game, yeah. and we knew that was going to happen one of these times, so a great job by Larkin Henderson. And, and, and you talked about it earlier. You said, you know, you have to run these plays to set things sure. up. There it was. They set that play up because they ran it multiple times in the first half and wide open there in the middle now. Another Union Bank first down. So here comes Henderson. He's got – back in the back with him. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to get through the line. He's going to go off to the left side, pick up another 15 yards for another Union Bank first down. And that's just a great play call because now you're spreading the field. Uh, you're faking. You're getting play action. Uh, you can see it here. you got a great lead block by Kirk and Henderson. I mean, he so athletic. He, he can play running back. He can play a split in, he can play quarterback, he can do about anything And, Coach, out there. they're running right behind big number 75, Travis Adkins, 6'4", 230, and they're using him. He's a plow horse right now. They're using every pound <laughs> of him right now. So here comes Henderson. He's got the single set back. He's going to hand the ball off. No, he's going to fake the handoff. Ball's tipped at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the Ottawa Glendorf defense. That's number 17 for the Titans, Nick Ellerbrock. Boy, we've called him a lot tonight. Yeah, Nick's been everywhere. He's done a great job running the ball, and defensively, he really stopped that play. They had it, this had it set up nice. It looked like they were going to try to set up a screen to Keaton Hockey there, and uh, if he doesn't get his hand on that Henderson pass and deflect it, then uh, it's going to be a nice game. And here's the situation, Coach. If, if, if the dogs can put another one on the board with OG's inability to move the ball down, it really puts him in a hole. Yeah, this is an important drive, and you always say that that third quarter is important. Sure. How you come out and how you react at halftime is critically important, so this could be one of the most pivotal drives of the game. So here's the handoff to the right side. He goes around the right side. He gets hit. Big time hit. Gets about two yards. Number 22, Brady Kirk. That's the fourth carry this half for Brady. So uh, game plan, Kirk. Henderson, Kirk, Henderson, Kirk. It's a good <laughs> game plan. And I'm showing my age. I played football, high school football, with both Larkin Henderson's dad and Brady Kirk's dad. <laughs> So uh, I'm now, feeling very, very elderly at this point now, right now. Now, John, you remember them. Do they remember you? No, they're probably not. <laughs> no. Uh, I was down far on the sideline. <laughs> way at the end of the bench is where I was at. Uh, third and eight from the 38. First third down here for the Dogs in the second half. They've got a man in motion. Henderson's in the gun. He's got a single set back. Two to the left. Henderson looks across the field. Throws down to the left side. He's going to be picked off. Picked off on the left side. He brings it down the field. This is number 18, Ryan Ross. He gets taken out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. So a huge turn of events as the OG Titans get the turnover. And what a great play by Walter Ross. He just stayed in his zone. The ball, I think I think it was overthrown, uh, and, and it just picked it up, and that is a huge momentum shift right there. Wow. Uh, just a, a, a really a great play. It looked like he was keying in uh, for David Edscorn, uh, Larkin Henderson, and missed him, and Walter Ross just makes a huge play for Ottawa Glendorf. So that's two turnovers apiece here, Coach, and that could be a huge one. The Dogs were looking to take it into the end zone. They get picked off, and here come the Titans, first and 10 from the 47 down, 14 to 6. And if you're Elida, the last thing you really want to do is give OG confidence. You don't <laughs> right, want to, you, right. You know, and, and they haven't really had much, and now you can start to see that confidence starting to brew. Here comes Mormon in the gun. He's got two to the left. He's got a man moving across the middle. He waits for the snap. There's the snap. He's going to roll to his left, looks downfield. He's going to keep it himself. He's got a little yardage. He's going to pick up about three yards, four yards, about five yards. Continues wow. to churn it out. Nice job by the young man. Landon Mormon just made a heck of a play. I mean, really, he, he probably shouldn't have gained a yard. But he, by grit and, and some, uh, some hard running here, you can see him. He puts his head down, tucks the ball away. I think he had, had a spin move in there. Yeah. There well, it is. You remember earlier in the game, he went across the left side, and that's where they found a little pay dirt. So maybe they found something on that left side. Well, and that's just a, a great job of him falling forward. And, you know, now you're in a great position, second and three, and you're past the 50. Uh, you're, you're really doing some good things. So he's got two to the left, two to the right, and he's got a single setback. Mormon waits in the gun. Good snap. He goes up the middle. 
And he is taken down by the Krim Reaper, Parker Krim. That's a loss of about a yard there. And you That's know, quick. That's quick, Coach. Well, <laughs> and, and he's a defensive end, and that play's being run in the middle of the field. So you can see how he closes right there. Oh, my goodness. In great form. That's the other thing. And his head's up, his shoulder's into him, and he brings him down. Woof. Lima Land, get to know that young man because he is going to make some news in the next four years. What a great play. I don't, I don't think you could have coached that any better. He just played that uh, perfectly. So here we go, third and four from the 47. Big third down for the Titans. Mormon's in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right, single setback. He throws off the left side. The reception's made. It's going to be a Union Bank first down. So a nice pitch and catch for the Titans. They'll pick up the first down. I really like that play call. I, I, do I too. think, yeah. you know, just a quick screen, get the first down, move the chains. You hear the crowd cheering. Um, and that's just a simple play. Um, just a really great call, play call by Ken Schreiner. Reception made by number 16 out there. That's Carter Dooling, 6'2", 198-pound senior. And I think if you're the Elida defense now, you're, you know. On you, your heels a little bit. You're yeah. on your heels, exactly. And, and, and I think, you know, with OG now, like I said earlier, they're gaining that confidence is exactly what they needed. So here come the Titans. Mormon's in the gun. He's got two to the right, one to the left. He's going to hand the ball off, off the left side, and they're going to get nice yardage, about a four-yard pickup. Number 17 for the Titans, that's Nick Ellerbrock. We've called him a lot tonight. And, you know, I, I'm going to say this is as kind as I can. You sure. know, you look at Nick Ellerbrock, and he's not a big guy. No, he's not. He doesn't look, you know, overtly fast or anything, but, boy, does he do a great job. You see him in on defense. You see him running the ball well. Just has a nose for the ball. He's one of those kids that – I can tell it's just a great football sure. player. We had uh, Sean E last week, and they've got Jordan Banks, and he's a similar back, yeah. and he's small, but he's really quick, and he gets those yep. tough yards, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here come the Titans on second and five from the 36-yard line. Mormon looked to pass. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to be near the first down marker. It looks like he'll be about a yard, yard and a half short. And I think the focus has been, you can tell at halftime, the adjustment is, is let's get, uh, let's get Mormon involved. Let's get Lane in the ball. Let's see what he can do. And now you're starting to open up some other things. You know, with him having that kind of threat of him running the ball, those screens are going to be there. Uh, those bubble screens are going to be there. And even, uh, you know, giving the ball uh, to Nick Ellerbrock is going to be there. Sure. And, and I think Coach, Coach Schreiner is looking at and keeping Mormon in really secure positions here. Yeah. He's not making him make a tough play, and he's using his legs to churn those yards out. Yeah, I don't think there's any read. I think it's a That's called right. play, and I think it's just he's doing a great job. So here comes Mormon. The Elida crowd gets a little loud. They're going to hand the ball up, and they're going to pick up another Union Bank first down as he goes across the marker. So a Union Bank first down for the Titans. They'll keep those chains moving, and 4.52 to go, down 14-6. to six. That's Alex Schrader. Uh, great run there. Uh, falling forward to get that first down, and you can see that offensive line getting low, getting uh, pad under pad. Uh, those Elida helmets are starting to go back a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yes, momentum is uh, starting to turn here a little bit. So first and ten from the 31, 435. Danny Holbert, John Zerby from Ottawa Glendorf High School. As the Titans are trying to lock this down, uh, down 14 to six, trying to get up on the Bulldogs here from Elida High School. Hand off to the left side. He squirts through. He's going to get a big gain of about nine yards. Again, number 17, Nick Ellerbrock, tough yards. Oh, uh, Nick Ellerbrock, he's slippery. He just, you know, you can see his feet moving in there. They're just going, they're going and going, and he's just slipping through and getting yards and uh, really second and three now, almost inside the red zone. Um, and, you know, they're not having to throw the ball. They're doing this all on the ground. Only one pass, I think, this entire series. 3.55 to go. Dogs lead 14 to 6. Here comes Mormon and the Titans. Great night for high school football. Temperatures in the low 70s, a nice breeze. Great crowd tonight. That's what it's all about. So here comes Mormon in the gun. He takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to run right up the middle. About uh, maybe a yard, yard and a half. Gets close to that first down. Yeah, Torrey Thomas did a great job, and Luke Burkholder was there as well. Uh, just uh, kind of closing that gap. You see Torrey Thomas there blow up uh, the, the running back in the backfield to make that play. And <laughs> Torrey Thomas does that a lot. Yeah, he's, he's impressive. <laughs> he very much is. You know, Danny, you were talking a little bit about a beautiful night. You know, the first half's fun, but in September it's like sunny. Right. Now it's like high school football. Yeah, it's exactly. dark. The lights are on. Smell that popcorn. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Third and one from the 22. Here come the Titans trying to pick up that Union Bank first down. Mormon's in the gun. He's got one back to the left, one back to the right. He takes the snap. He's going to hand it off, and they're going to pick up a Union Bank first down. He gets across the marker, and that'll move the chains. Yeah, Schrader just I, – I like the way he runs. He's probably not a big play guy, 
but he definitely is, if you need a yard, you're going to give it to Alex Schrader, and that gives them another first down on this drive. And the NBA uh, in the uh, end zone is getting pretty excited. They're cheering a lot back there. So, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm about to head down after the game and see if I can borrow some of these jerseys. Where did they get that many 90s NBA jerseys? I don't know. Right? The 90s must be cool. <laughs> you know, so. I'm a 90s kid, so there I'm like, go. you know, the 90s must be cool so I'm now. I'm an 80s guy. so <laughs> 80s are cool. Yeah, 80s right. are cool with me, too. First and 10 from the 20. Here come the Titan. Mormon's in the gun. He's going to take it off to the left side. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to pick up 10, 12 yards, and he gets knocked out of bounds. Nice run by Mormon. Danny, you said something a little bit ago, and this is, this is coming true. They've only really run the ball to the left. I, mean, they, I, I haven't seen them run the ball to the right very very often, so there must see, there must see something coach, there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's film they're, they're seeing something there that's uh, allowing them to get those uh, those holes and those those openings for uh, to make that kind of yardage. Well, and, and one philosophy too, you got Par Car Parker Krim on that side, and would you rather run at him or away from him? Because his speed, you know, he can right. catch you. So let's run at him and put a blocker on him. Right, absolutely, and I think that uh, it's paid off for him. Yep, so here comes Mormon, second and one. He's going to hand the ball off right up the middle. And that's going to be real close to a first down. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, no signal yet. Yep, they're going to call that a first down. You know, early in the game, it, you know, it kind of felt like it was lopsided. Elida was just in control. OG looked young and maybe a little bit not ready for the moment. And, and I had this thought. I thought, a, a Ken Triner team, this is not going to last for long. No, and all right. of a sudden, you've seen them just show up. I mean, they are they are a well, different that, team than what we've seen in the first quarter. And they're challenging in light at the line of scrimmage, and they're winning. Yes. So, uh, you know, kudos to that coaching staff because they brought the heat here in the second half. So here come the Titans, first and 10 from the 10-yard line, trying to put it on the scoreboard. Here comes Mormon. He's going to hand the ball off to the left side. He's got him out there, and he's going to be taken down at about the five-yard line. So a great hit by, did you see Amari Walsh come up and support? and just really hit him hard. And that's the first time I've seen Elida Blitz. Uh, you know, defensively, they're probably starting to, uh, to, to have questions on what they're doing. And so that's the first time I've seen them blitz, but what a great play uh, by Nick Ellerbrock to put his head down to get yards. Uh, Amari Wash came up, made a great play, a touchdown saving play. So second and five, 116 to go. They pretty much used the whole third quarter here, kept the ball on the ground. This is Mormon in the gun. He's got a single back to the left. He's got two receivers to the right. Snap is back, picks it up. He goes to the left side. He's got a crease, and we're going to – now, I, I don't know if you saw that, Coach, but the Elida crowd saw it, and it looked like a hold, but they're going to give the touchdown to Ottawa Glandorf, and we'll have to see that on the replay. Yeah, I think uh, everybody in the uh, town of Elida, <laughs> Gomer, American Township, probably yeah. seen that, uh, yeah. that hold. Uh, we'll but, see it uh, here on the replay. See it right – right there – Parker Krim was just thrown to the ground, and uh, too bad, but the OG Titans, they're going to take it, Coach. I, that makes I'll, it 14 to, 14 to 12. I was always told that it's not holding unless they call it, you know. So right. they didn't call it, uh, so I guess it wasn't holding. Oh, I thought he got into the end zone. Whoa. But, so I'm confused here. They've got no points on the board. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. They just put the points on the board. I was confused. Okay. They had not put the points on the board. so. And they have to go for two yeah, here. They're going to go have for no two, choice. yeah. Yep. So. Here come the Titans. 57 seconds to go, trying to tie this game up. Here's Mormon in the gun. He gets the snap. He looks to throw. Throws across the middle. Ball's knocked down. They'll not get the two-point conversion. Elida holds, and they lead 14-12. to 12. Well, just a great play by Elida, and I, I do like the play call uh, to throw a quick, uh, a quick out route here, or a, a slant route here, but what a great play by Torrey Thomas to get in front of it, and uh, what an awesome job by Luke Burkholder just to knock the ball down. So 57 seconds to go here in the third quarter. The Elida Bulldogs, they continue to lead 14-12. to 12. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Dale's Concrete is our touchdown sponsor. <clears throat> our instant replay tonight is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And our crew is doing a fantastic job of bringing you some great instant replays. So Amari Walsh, the freshman, brings the ball up to about the 29-yard line. And, boy, he's been a real tough kid tonight. Yeah, he's done a great job on special teams. He had a great return earlier in the game that was uh, called back for holding, but he puts Elida in good field position. And, Danny, I think this is kind of the fun part of, of mm -hmm. the game where sure. both teams, it's close. 
uh, and both the sidelines are getting into it. The fans are starting to really get into it. Um, I think you're going to see a really fun end of the third quarter and going into the fourth quarter. Well, and I also think this is where the coaching staff from Elias says, look, Larkin Henderson, you're a third-year starter. You yep. know what you're doing. We're going to put the game in your hands. Lead us down the field, son, and let's win this ball game. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's uh, – you know, all those years of playing and all those practices and all those yep. times in the weight room, n now's the time as a senior that, to take charge and to take lead of this team. And they've got Brady Kirk in the backfield with him. He's got one receiver to the white, right and one to the left. They're going to keep it himself. Larkin Henderson's going to go up the middle for about two yards. I thought Brady Kirk was going to take that. You're right. They've got me fooled every time they do that. Yeah, they're reading inside. They're reading alignment on the inside, and I think OG's got – uh, they've made some adjustments where now uh, instead of uh, maybe sending a certain person, they're, they've uh, on the quarterback or on the running back, I should say, they've got somebody else assigned to the, to the running back. So it's confusing uh, Elida a little bit. Um, you know, those those 12 yard gains that we've seen uh, a drive ago are now shortening down into four to five to three yard gains. So second and eight, 15 on the play clock. So you will see a play ran before the end of the third quarter. Henderson's in the gun. He's got a single back. He's got two to the left. He's got one to the right. He's going to roll to his right, looking downfield, throws the ball. He's got a man out there and a nice catch by number 83, Keaton Hockey. And it looks like they're going to give him a catch. I wasn't sure because they, they hadn't signaled anything, but I like that idea. I like the idea of rolling Henderson out. It yes, is tough to, to throw rolling to your left when you're right-handed, but getting him out on the edge and allowing him to throw there I think is a great idea. When we come back, we'll have the fourth quarter. Elida continues to lead 14 to 12. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Ottawa Glendorf High School for the start of the fourth quarter. The Elida Bulldogs lead 14 to 12. And John, they've got the ball first and 10 at the 39. Got to keep that momentum going and uh, use as much clock as you can. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, really, Danny, now going into the fourth quarter, 12 minutes here. Uh, you, you, you consider you're only going to get the ball probably twice this quarter, um, and so you really have to be smart with the football and make sure you don't have any turnovers and take up some clock here. John Stocker, Dennis, this tonight's premier sponsor for the Ida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. So there's the run up the middle as they continue to churn those yards and keep that clock moving. Well, I, I find it ironic. I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but you know both teams are spread teams. They've got three to four receivers. Um, but this has been a, just a slobber knocker. Yeah, this has right. not yeah. been, you know, throw the ball no, around. It's mono times. Mono. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just who's man. You like man. that. You I like love that. it. Yeah. I love it. Because, you know, that's what high school football to me is all about, you know. And in these moments right now when they're tired and they've been out there the entire night, um, you're going to see what each team is really made of. And now we've got Jackson Cobalt out here. If he gets single coverage, let's watch this action as Larkin Henderson is going to roll. He's going to, oh, he's going to hand off. Off to the right side, or to the left side, excuse me. And that's number 22, Brady Kirk. So OG playing stout against the run. And Kirk, Kirk has hurt his ankle, and he is hobbling off the field. Let's hope he's okay. But that would be a big loss for the dogs. Yeah, absolutely. A oh, looks like a cramp. Okay. Yep, looks like so a that's cramp. A, that's a good thing. Not only on offense, but he's their middle linebacker on defense. Yeah. So I uh, definitely want to get Brady Kirk back for the Bulldogs. So you see Kirk on this play. He went down pretty hard and he got that cramp. So. I love the way that Justin uh, Justic Pope played that uh, play there for Looking Ottawa. The dogs, they go off to the left side, and they are going to be, oh, boy, this is going to be close, Coach. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> looks like uh, Kevin Mangus is going to come in, and he's going to call it a first down. So they'll move the chains with 10.33 to go. He's going to give them a very generous spot. I, I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I, I'm watching that line, and I'm thinking, that's not a first down, but he, he gave it to him. So, hey, you know what? I'm not down there. His eyes are much better than our eyes, Danny. <laughs> so uh, I would never question an no, official's no, call. No, no, I wouldn't either. No, 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 no. We were coaches. We never did that. <laughs> Here comes Henderson in the gun. He's going to go up the middle. He's going to pick up two to three tough yards. So they go across midfield, and uh, – Try to keep those chains moving. It's just grind time. I, I, I just, it, it really is fun to see these guys just get after it. And you can see them. Guys are both sides. They're getting up slow. They're hurting. I mean, they're tired. Um, but, uh, you know, now you're going to see here in these final moments of this game, you know, who is in the best shape, uh, who's got the best, uh, who's uh, got the best mentality here, sure. uh, and mental toughness to finish this thing out. Coach, we knew we were going to have a good game. 
I, I really anticipated a lot more points, but you said it earlier, defense is going to be the key here. And boy, I know OG's down 12, or down two, but boy, they've, they've played an outstanding defensive game. And they've just gotten better as they the have. nights went on. Like you could just see it, their growth from quarter to quarter to quarter. Um, and they have, they've played great defense tonight. And let's not shortchange Elida. They've continued to stay with their game plan and they're just happy to be where they're at. So here comes Henderson in the gun. He's looking deep across the middle. Oh, and is it intercepted? He went down. Are they going to call that a catch? If that was a, oh my goodness, coach. That might be the catch of the year by a defensive back. Oh, that was a, just a fantastic interception by Walter Ross. I think that's his second of the game. I that's think he had is. one earlier there uh, before halftime. And, uh, you know, Henderson just overshot. Oh, he did make the catch. What? Our crew, that's a great shot. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you, fantastic job, camera guys, but fantastic job, Walter Ross. And, you know, I, I think I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, jinx Elida, no. but I think when they threw that pick earlier in the third quarter, I think that was the same play. I think he overthrew him in the same spot, and Walter Ross was there, and that's just a huge momentum shift for the Titans. Wow, it Oh, that, did you hear that? That is the quarterback's sister that shot that instant replay. So she works here for us for WSN. Well, she needs a raise, Ben Wright, because <laughs> she did an outstanding job. Hey, I'll, if he's handing them out, well, I'll take one. Absolutely. <laughs> it's her third game. <laughs> the voice of God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the folks at home can't hear it, but we can hear everything Ben tells us in the truck. So. All right, so that takes it up the field, 8.58 to go. Here come the Titans, second and four, uh, a field goal away from taking the lead. Yeah, they, they're, in, in, and they're in great position here. Now, they got a long field to go here, but, you know, I, I think they've, they've found something. They've found some identity. Um, they found a scheme that's going to work for them, and they are just repping it over and over again. Second and four, 8.35 to go here from Ottawa Glandorf High School. Titans down 14 to 12. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby, great high school action tonight. Mormon's in the gun. He's going to go off the left side, and he's going to be hit hard by Torrey Thomas and just take him down. So some these kids are all going to need a uh, real hot shower tonight after Absolutely. all the hitting they're taking. <laughs> well, the, the, the thing here is this third down is so critical because, uh, you know, as you're looking at third and three or third and four, uh, there's going to be this is going to be a big play call. And this is 57 Austin Mass, the six foot 185 pound senior, is down on the field. So we're going to take a timeout here. They're going to attend to this young man. We're watching high school sports right here on WOSN. Our scoreboard is courtesy of Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. So here come the Titans on third and three, a critical third down from the 30-yard line. Mormon's in the gun. Snap goes under his legs. It's going to be picked up, and it's going to be a huge loss and a huge play for the Elida defense. Yeah, what a what a momentum shift and a uh, pick-me-up for Elida. I feel like uh, there for a moment you could kind of – you could kind of feel the tightness uh, in the Elida crowd, and it kind of got eerily quiet, and yeah. so that was a big play for them. And, Coach, we're going to look back. If it goes in Elida's favor, that may be the play of the game. Nothing the defense did, just a bad snap by the OG line. Yeah, just a mental mistake, and sure. you know, those happen. And, uh, you know, we talked about earlier, sometimes turnovers could be the key, but even just little mistakes like a bad snap on a big third down can can really change a game. So here comes OG in punt formation with 7.20 to go in the fourth quarter. They're down 14 to 12. Snap is good. Punt is up. And it is a nice high punt end over end. Going to go to about the 45, and it's going to take an Elida bounce, and it's going to put him in great position, Coach. Yeah, it was uh, – you know, it, it looked like it was going to hit about the 50, and I thought Edscorn was going to fair catch it, and he let it go, and, boy, what a great bounce for Elida. So big game tomorrow in the shoe, Coach. Notre Dame, Ohio State, number two, number five. Who you got? Well, it's hard to go against Ohio State, especially at home and being a Buckeye fan and all that. You know, you, you know, we're going to fight in the booth if you pick Notre Dame. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I, no I do like Marcus Freeman being sure. a Buckeye. Oh, yeah, and you, you know, we root for him at all times. But uh, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, 7.30 game, I believe. And, you know, crowd it's should be, be a little rowdy. Yeah, crowd so. should be rowdy. You know, I, I, you know, we were talking about this earlier today. You know, I wonder how the reception will be with Notre Dame with Freeman being the head coach. Sure, I mean, sure. I'm sure it will be warm at first. And then after that, <laughs> you know, maybe first play, and that's it. So here come the dogs. 7-10 to go. They're up 14-12. Larkin Henderson is in the gun. He's got a single setback, and we've got stoppage in play here. Not real sure what they stopped for, but now they're going to roll the clock. The play clock, that is. So here comes Henderson in the gun. He gets the snap. 
He's going to hand the ball off to Tyler Carter, and he is met by a wall of OG defenders, and there's no gain on that play. Yeah, and, and you know, Danny, at this point, you know, I'd like to see another score, but sure. I, I think at this point, you know, whoever can stop the other team from scoring is probably going to win. I know mean, it kind of sounds backwards by no, saying no, no, that. No, 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 I agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I mean, and also I think Coach Harmon is, is trying to force OG to use some of those timeouts yeah, if they get yep, the ball back. Yep. So, you know, it's, 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 it's good football strategy right now. Typically you think, let's score, let's score, let's score. Right. But, you know, keeping, you know, like you said, you know, using timeouts, taking up time, and maybe just keeping the other team from scoring is sure. the most important thing right now. So here comes Henderson in the gun. He's got two years left. And Coach Harmon, speaking of timeouts, he's going to take a timeout. So Elida takes a timeout. They've got two left, which is really important. So we're going to take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Metzger Financial Services, our timeout sponsor. 6.28 to go here from Ottawa Glendale High School. Henderson takes the ball. He's going to hand the ball off to Tyler Carter. Tried to go around the left side. Boy, he was hit hard. Only about a gain of one, Coach. Yeah, Cy Rump came up and, and laid the wood. As, <laughs> as they, they would say. say. Yes, as they say. And, uh, boy, you were seeing some hitting going on. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing guys starting well, to feel see, it. Yeah, Tyler Carter just grabbed his ribs. And, boy, he's, he's kind of trying to catch his breath right now. Uh, he ain't coming out of the game, I can tell you that. Well, heck no. <laughs> he's tough. He's tough. And this is this is what's fun. I, you know, I love small school football, but I I love WBL football oh, because you just see the hit. It the is absolute uh, anarchy sometimes. How hard these kids hit. So here come the dogs. 5:48 to go. Running that clock. Henderson is in the gun. He's got Carter to his right. He's going to look across the field. He's going to fake the throw. He's going long down the sidelines. He's got a man down there. And, they, uh, yeah, I saw it. There was a lot of pushing down there, so they're going to get pass interference on the Titans. And, you know, I like that play call. So you do know, I. Throw the ball towards the sideline. You've had a couple picks. Keep the ball away from the middle of the field. Now we'll see the replay here. Uh, ooh. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I'm glad I'm not making the calls. Wow. <laughs> what do you think, Coach? Uh, yeah, I think if I was Coach Harmon, I, you know. You got one. Yeah, I got one. Take so, it. it may be a makeup for Kirk, you know, hitting mm -hmm. the ground and, and being called down. So, Jim Epperly's going to walk this one off. Pass interference against the Titans. Now, I, I, would, I would venture to say if we went over on the other side that the uh, folks from Ottawa would say no. Very respectfully, they'd say no, I'm yeah, sure. Sure, sure, you know. absolutely. So, 5.38 to go. The Dogs lead 14 to 12. First and 10 from the 27 yard line. I gotta believe, Coach, they're gonna keep it on the ground here. Would you not say so? Well, Danny, you're 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 exactly right. I think at this point, to throw the ball, especially around, across the middle, sure. you're not gonna do that. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Here comes Carter off the right side. He got a nice lead block, and he's gonna pick up a big five yard gain. That was a nice play call. Great call and a great job by Carter to find open space. And, again, he's not trying to break it. He's just trying to get yards. And right and they, now that's what they need. You see that? They ran right behind big 55 Torrey Thomas. Yep. I think I'd run behind Torrey Thomas every play. <laughs> you and I could run behind yeah, Torrey oh, no Thomas. No kidding. Well, maybe you. I don't know about <laughs> me. But. Five minutes even to go here. 5.06, excuse me. 14 to 12, Elida leads, driving the ball. Second five from the 22 yard line. Here comes Henderson, he's gonna keep it himself to the right side, he goes across the 20 to about the 19 to the 17. He picks up some big yardage. And I, I really like that play call. You know, they've they've went to Carter, they've went to Ed Scorn, they've went to Kirk. It's 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 go time now. I mean, Absolutely. it's crunch time. It's, it's the moment where you need your leader to do the things that you've coached him to do and he's proven to do. I think now is the time to put the ball in Larkin Henderson's hands. 4.32 to go, third and maybe half a yard here, Coach. I would be shocked if anybody else other than Henderson carries the ball. And this is surprising to me if they put him in the gun. I'm a believer in putting him behind center and sneaking half a yard or less. Yeah, especially, you know, uh, in this kind of situation, you should be able to get a yard. But we'll see. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to get a yard. He's going to get a big yard. He's going to take it in for a ball. Dog touchdown. What a call. Well, it shows what I know, Coach. Well, you know, that's why they're coaching, and we're up here in the booth, you know, because uh, I would have agreed with you, but that's a great play call. 
and we just said it a minute ago, Larkin Henderson. It's his time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, put the ball in his hands, and look what he can do. He, he knew it. He knew it. Once he broke the first level and he reached the second level, he knew that he was going to score. And, man, what an exciting uh, uh, moment for the Elida Bulldogs. Well, I think I might have my vote, Coach, so we'll have to see. <laughs> Larkin <laughs> Henderson takes it in, and a great run by that young man. He puts the dogs up 20-12, to 12, awaiting the extra point. Let's see how that goes. The snap is back. The hold is good. It is up, and it is good. Elida leads with 4.07 to go, 21 to 12. Can they get the big WBL road victory? We'll find out when we come back right here on WOSN. Dale's Concrete is our touchdown sponsor tonight. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipsy for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Take a look at our stadium renovation project here for Ottawa Glendorf, and it is absolutely beautiful, Coach. I'm telling you, they're doing good. They're, this place is going to be a show place. Well, Ottawa Glendorf community has always invested in their school system. You know, they remodeled the Supreme Court a few years back. I'm showing my age a few years yes. back. Uh, one of the most historic gyms in Northwest Ohio, in my opinion. Oh, look and, at this. Beautiful. And their stadium here. I mean, this is a tough place to play. Oh. Starting with this turf, you know, I know they added a building. Um, just to the north here Looks a few like years back. college facility. Look at that. That's absolutely Beautiful. gorgeous. And, they, and, the, and from the truck, they tell us they're rerouting the road. You so. know, that does sound like God speaking it to you. It really does. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid that uh, the voice of God will say, like, thou shall not, like, speak badly of Ben Wright or something, you know. <laughs> right. So, uh, But uh, what a beautiful facility that uh, they have. And, uh, you know, you got to really give credit to the uh, communities of Ottawa and Glendorf. So here come the Titans, first and 10 from the 23. They got to hurry up, coach, and Mormon's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off as they go off the right side. Big number 42 for the Titans. That's Alex Schroeder, the 6'1", 195-pound junior. Yeah, and I think at this point, if you're Elida, you're just no big plays. Yep. I mean, they're going to get Keep yards. Keep in front of you, absolutely. Yeah, they're going to get yards here, and that's fine. You know, even if they get a score, um, you know, you don't want to give them a score, but even if they take up two minutes and a half or so to, to get a score, that's fine. Are you surprised the OG's not in more of a hurry-up mode, Coach? Well, I'm just not sure they're built that way. Sure, you know, yeah, I mean, that's a great point. You, you know, I mean, they, they, they're young. At some point, they're going to have to throw the ball here, but, you know, I, I'm sure there's some – there's some. Uh, Parker Krim, the Krim Reaper, comes out of nowhere and takes down the tailback. I mean, has he has he been blocked tonight? No, not by no. I mean, he is just amazing, and that's not being critical of OG. No. He is just a really special Look talent. Look he at is. him. I'm telling you, Coach, we, we haven't seen a freshman like this in a long time in this area, and I'm not, I'm not, that's not hyperbole. That kid yeah. is talented. Yeah, and I like the way he plays. Uh, not only does he does he play with enthusiasm, but I feel like he plays with a lot of uh, – he's just very uh, – you don't see him celebrating. You don't see right, him right. drawing attention humble, to himself. Humble he's kid. humble. I love that. And wait till he gets in the weight room, Coach. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's going to be a force. So third and eight from the 25, Titans with the ball. They're going to do a little trickery. They get to the left side. they got got wide open spaces out here. They're going to pick up a Union Bank first down and maybe more. Looked like a late hit, but they're not going to call it. So he must have been inbounds when he got hit. And that's a good play call for Ottawa. And, you know, for Elida, it's it's not a terrible thing. No. I mean, the first down, sure, but there's still a long way to go. Two minutes and 32 seconds to go. Uh, you know, you, you're not in you're not in panic mode yet. And, Coach, we haven't talked a lot about it maybe earlier, but Kevin McGuire, he's in the middle of that line, the big young man, 310 pounds. There's a reason they're running on the side because they can't get up the middle. Well, and he's played the whole game. Yeah, absolutely. He hasn't taken a playoff, and he's still playing hard at he's, 310 he's pounds. He's a very good player. Absolutely. So here come the Titans, first and 10 from the 37. Mormon looks across. He throws to his left. He's got his man out there. He's going to be taken down, and he's going to be kept in bounds, which is a huge play for the dogs. Well, you had some really great tackling there uh, by Luke Burkholder, by uh, – uh, Amari Wash there as well. Just great tackling by Elida. Okay, Nick Ellerbrock on the reception. So looks like OG's going to take a timeout here with 2.22 to go, realizing they've got to score twice. And I, and I love your evaluation of the dogs here. Yeah, you can give up the yards, give up the middle of the field, absolutely, keep them in bounds. And that's why the crowd started cheering so loud as they kept them in bounds. Yeah, and I think at some point, Ottawa Glander is going to have to use some timeouts. You know, they, they're down to two. But the biggest thing right now is keep them in front of you. You can't give up a big play. You can't give up a big score. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to give up any score, but 
you definitely don't want to have them uh, have an onside kick here because that's right. what they'll do. So yeah. keep them in front of you. Coach, you and I talked about it during the break. I don't think people understand if the dogs can hold on. What a it's, it's a monumental win in this program. It really is. Yeah, it's, it's whenever you can win at Ottawa Glendorf, that's a, that's a big moment because the, you just don't win here. That's right. And, um, and, and the, the history since Coach Schreiner's been at Ottawa Glendorf is so, is so great. Uh, that would be a huge uh, movement for Elida's program. So they're going to roll Mormon to the right. He's looking down the field. He throws it out of bounds. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Great play there uh, with pressure by, by Parker Krim as well. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's like game. he's just everywhere, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he's going to be in Columbus someday if he keeps it well, up. Well, <laughs> he's just doing a great job. You know, and I want to give a lot of accolades to Tory Thomas as well. He's on that other side. I think he, you know, that's the nice thing about oh. Parker Krim. You know, he's got a nice uh, compliment. Well, I well, should say, uh, you know, Tory yeah. Thomas is probably the key piece. Sure. We talk a lot about Parker and, and Amari Walsh because they're freshmen. And right. we're, we're, we still want to give credit to everybody else on that team. Sure. But we just get excited when we see these younger kids enjoying Absolutely. football. And yeah. So here come the Titans from the right side. And Mormon just throws it uh, across the 40-yard line. No one out there. And that's going to bring up a big fourth down with 2.12 to go. And this coach is the play of the game. Yeah. And I liked, I liked to see – I like what I saw in Torrey Thomas on that last play. He was getting reached by a tackle. He fought that off. He, he ripped through a running back trying to block him. And he got in the way of Landon Mormon, which now brings us to a fourth down. You know, Ottawa's going to have to reach a little bit deeper in their playbook. This is probably not a play that they have uh, that they have high success rates running. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to throw the ball downfield a little bit. So here we go, 2-12 to go. Titans down 21-12, to 12, fourth and 11 from the 37. Mormon's in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. He's got a single setback and two to the left. He takes the snap, looks across the field, throws deep across the middle. He's got a man out there, and that's going to be pass interference, I would think. They're not going to call it. And, Coach, I, that looked like he got to the receiver a little bit early. It was a great play by Seth Sharp, number two. And, man, it was bang, bang. I yeah, mean, it's going to take a look to see. But I think he read it well. Um, it was a really close call. Ooh. Oh, you're right. It, it may have been inst or simultaneous. And, you know, I, I give the officials credit, you know, for kind of letting that make. play, yeah. letting that play roll because sure. what a big play by Sharp and kind of sealing this win for Elida. And, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> the folks in the booth here are looking at our replay because they was wanting to know. And, I, yeah, yeah, that's it was a good call, absolutely. You know, when you, it, the replays are awesome because, you know, yeah. when you see it on the field, you feel like you see one thing and you look on the replay and you see another thing. But uh, what a big play for Elida. Great play by Seth Sharp. So 2.07 to go. The Dogs lead 21 to 12. All they've got to do is maybe pick up a first down here and uh, call it a night. So here comes Tyler Carter as he falls down. Picks up maybe a yard across the line of scrimmage. And I don't think he meant to fall. I don't think he did either. But it doesn't hurt right now. You know what no, I mean? Right, I mean, just right. the, it's almost like taking a knee. And you just wonder if Coach Schreiner is going to use one of those two timeouts he's got left. Well, I think at this point, you know, the game's it's out of reach. Sure, and I know sure. that, yeah, you could do the politically Absolutely. correct thing and call timeouts <laughs> and say, yeah, we are yeah. still – but, you know, this game, the game has been sealed. Yeah, you want to get your kids off the field Absolutely. without any injuries and, and you regroup. And, hey, look, you can take a lot of positives away from your OG. You played a heck of a game. And you played a heck of a team. Oh, and you yeah. hung in there with a, a, you know, with a really good team. And you're still playing hard. And guys are still making plays. You know, if you're OG, I mean, my goodness, you got a lot positive you can take away from this game. Well, a lot we know. Coach Schreiner just took one of those politically correct timeouts. <laughs> well, he's a lot smarter than me. So... <laughs> Uh, 120 to go. The dogs lead 21 to 12. Danny Holbrook and John Zerby from Ottawa Glendorf High School. Two tur two turnovers tonight by each team. We saw a lot of running game. We saw some passing. We saw some good plays, some bad plays. But all in all, a fantastic high school football game for week three. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, you couldn't have asked for a better night weather-wise, right. a better facility. Because you know the bad weather's coming. You know it's, it is. It's coming. <laughs> you know, we need to enjoy and, 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 and you know be thankful for these nights that we have that is like this. But you know, the football as well. I mean, it's been a clean game. You know, I, I, I really respect both teams and both coaches because it's been a hard-fought game. These guys have gotten after it, but you haven't really seen any trash talking. You haven't – you've seen guys helping each other up. 
And to me, that's very indicative of the coaching staff and the discipline that these teams have and what great communities you have, yeah, too. Yeah, and Coach, what, what, what do you tell your kids from OG? You, you lose last week to, to Wapakoneta 14-7, and you lose this week to Elida. Two, probably the top two teams in the yeah. WBL, I would imagine. Right. Uh, you know, you got Van Wert, you got St. Mary's. Right. But it looks like Wapak's going to take care of business tonight down in yeah. St. Mary's. But, you know, what do you, what do you tell your kids? And moral victories are okay, but, you know, it's tough. Sure. They're still young, and yeah. so they still uh, believe in what they're doing. Sure. So that you know, if you if you're old and it's and it's starting to happen, it's tough to maintain that composure. But these guys are young; they're continuing to get better. You see it. I mean, I see an improvement tonight from beginning to end. And so that's what I think you focus on is the improvement that you're making. So Larkin Henderson's going to keep the ball himself. He's going to go across the 45-yard line, and that will take it to fourth down. And Coach Schreiner's going to take another timeout with 1:11 to go. Well, I do like this. I like the fact that uh, he's going to make Eli to earn it. And I think it, um, you know, it sends a signal to his sure. own team. He, he's saying, hey, we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to stay here to the very end and we're going to fight until the very end and we're not going to stop until the whistle and the final clock says zero. Our timeout sponsor tonight is brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Also, mark your Labor Day on your calendar. The second annual LifeWise 5K presented by the Tom Hall Family Dealerships. The race begins at the Sunnydale House where LifeWise and Elida begins its second year. We have more to celebrate as the launch of academies in Allen East and Spencerville take place in September. To sign up, Google Elida LifeWise 5K and follow the link to runningsup.com. No, I'm glad that says run slash walk because <laughs> I'm, ru I'm running slash walking Monday <laughs> in the LifeWise Academy 5K, and there will probably be more walking well, than running. I'm glad that, sure. that, that, that uh, our, our benevolent leader, Ben Rife, is not making it part of the job. You know, you gotta well, go, you got to go walk. That's true. Yeah, that's so. true. Uh, I'd like to see Ben out there maybe, uh, you know, showing what he's got. <laughs> no, you uh, No, there he is. So we will not see Ben Rife out there the at voice, the uh, Labor Day 5K. The voice just said no. Yes, okay. <laughs> One eleven to go, fourth and eight. And they're going to try to take some time here. Henderson goes to his right. He goes across the field, and he's going to be taken out of bounds, but he stays in bounds, and that's going to bring a change of possession here. That's going to stop the clock with 104 to go. And, you know, Ottawa now has a chance to, you know, maybe try something. Um, you know, maybe I hate to use the word Hail Mary because sure. it's, you know, it's, it's not time for that. But uh, try to throw the ball down the field or maybe, you know, hook and ladder or something to, you know, get some, some, some plays here. But if you're Elida, you know, you're really just trying to hang on here. You don't want to get anybody hurt. You're trying to hang on. You don't want anything to happen here in the last moments. Uh, you want to get out of here with a win. Absolutely. So 104 to go. Titans in the gun. We've got two backs there. We've got two to the right, one to the left. Mormon kind of rolls back to his right, throws down the left side. He's got a man wide open. A nice pitch and catch. Number 16, Carter Dueling, the 6'2 senior, with a nice catch and steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Well, I love that play call because it's just a corner to the to the sideline. And uh, what a great throw by Landon Mormon. Put it right on the money. And uh, I know we're, we're ticking down here with just a few, with about a minute to go. But, uh, you know, now, you know, I mean, OG. They're past the 50, and there's a chance to score. We take a look at the Eli uh, upcoming schedule for Elida. They've got Bath at 0-2, Salina 0-2, and, and Defiance at 1-1. One one. Coach, they could be 6-0 at yeah. the end of September. Well, <laughs> and, and that would be exciting, you know, and then Absolutely. they'll finish out with, you know, uh, some tough teams. But uh, what an exciting time to be an Elida Bulldog. Mormon throws deep down the left side. He's got a man out there, and a nice, impressive play by number. Let's see who that is. Like number two. Number two for the dogs. Seth Sharp. Seth Sharp, an excellent play by Seth Sharp on the back end of that. Well, and uh, what I liked about what he did was is he came across the field and made that play. I mean, he, he really did a great job of reading and uh, and getting across the field and getting his hips turned and, and made a great play. So, Coach, it doesn't get any easier for the Titans. They've got St. Mary's next weekend. They've got a hungry bath squad who we had last week who's better than their 0-2 record. Yeah. And then they've got Van Wert. So, they got some tough sledding ahead. You know, that's the WBL, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hate to say it. but Like I, the SEC. I, well, I coached small school football <laughs> yeah. for a long time. And, you know, sometimes you have weeks where there's, you know, you have a week off and you don't get any weeks off in the WBL. Sure. Mormon rolls to his right. He almost lost the snap there. He's going to go across the 40, end up at about the 36, 37-yard line where the clock continues to run at 38 seconds. And this is, this is kind of where the chaos happens because there no, there's no more timeouts. And so – 
Uh, you know, if you're a lot of you're hoping you get a turnover here. Foreman throws to the left side. He's going to be picked off the middle of the field, and that's going to seal the deal. Number two, who we just talked about, Seth Sharp, and he deserved it, Coach. He's played a heck of a game. Yeah, you know, this uh, fourth quarter, man, he's come up big, and he did a great job. He just read it. Um, and like I said just a minute ago, you know, it, the kind of the chaos happens when you don't have a timeout and you're rushing to the line, and uh, Seth Sharp has made two big plays here at the end of the game to seal the deal for the Bulldogs. Saturday on WSN, we've got Carthage and Albion College Football at 11.30. 6.30, we've got Hard Northern. The Polar Bears take on the Ada Bulldogs at 9 p.m. The Liberty Benton Eagles and the Arlington Red Devils, a big rivalry up in Hancock County. Next week, you've got OG Marion Local Volleyball. That ought to be a great game. Two volleyball powers, Ooh. Tenora LCC football, and Lincoln View Elida. I'm telling you, we got the best coverage in the area. I tell you, WSN does it right. And that's going to do it, Coach. The Elida Bulldogs come into OG and get a hard-fought 21-12 victory. Well, pats off to both teams, both coaching staffs. What a fantastic high school football game. You know, 21-12. Uh, it, it was just a great game to be a part of tonight, Absolutely. Danny. Absolutely. So the, the Bulldogs come into OG. They win the ball game. We're going to come back. We're going to have our Stolly Hustle Award winner and try to get down on the field to get some interviews. We're watching high school sports right here. On back here at Ottawa Glendale High School where the Bulldogs get a big 21-12 win with Coach Kyle Harmon. Coach, your defense was outstanding tonight. Yeah, they've been playing lights out the first three games. You know, our defensive staff does a great job of preparing those guys. I feel like they're prepared every week. They know what's coming, and, you know, they execute the game plan, and those guys played hard tonight. They made some nice plays. Coach, we talked about it in the booth. Did the kids understand how tough it is to win here? Because they didn't – they weren't phased at all. No, you know – we're riding some momentum right now. You know, we were 2-0 coming in. You know, they, they got us last year when we were 2-0. So, we, you know, we were looking forward to this game. We knew they were a good physical football team, you know, and we challenged our guys, you know, up front to control the line of scrimmage. You know, I thought we ran the ball well, stopped the run, and, you know, credit to both sides of the football. They played hard. Well, congratulations, Coach. Big win. Thanks, we're going to bring this guy in here right here, Parker Krim. Coach Zerby, you, you, look, you, you've watched Oof. a lot of kids play. Yeah. And he's our Stolly Hustle Award winner right. tonight. He's got a bright future. <laughs> yeah, Parker did a great job tonight. Just tell us your mentality going into tonight's game with the big rivalry with OG. Well, I knew that we had to be violent. We had to be physical because we, as Coach said, they were 0-2 last year and they beat us. So we had to come out with fire in our eyes. Parker, you, your mindset as a freshman, you, you look like a, an upperclassman. Do, do you take that role on, that responsibility big time, right? Yes, sir. I, I always do. <laughs> well, look, I've nicknamed you the Crim Reaper, but your coach said you're the Cobra, right? Yes, sir. It was, it was named after Dave, Dave something. <laughs> us, us old guys know that's Dave, Dave Parker. Parker. Okay, yeah, the there it is. Yeah. Are you good with the Crim Reaper? Because you're killing quarterbacks. Yes, sir. I'm very fine with that. Oh, well, congratulations, young man. You did Thank an outstanding you. job. Yeah, congratulations. Great job. Keep it up. Thank you. All right, buddy. So the Bulldogs get the 21-12 victory, and it was outstanding.